Hello. Ma'am, please mute yourself. Thank you. Thank you. 
হোস্টটা কে দেখাচ্ছে হোস্ট কাকে দেখাচ্ছে পেয়ার জেইন রে গিয়া মাতনো দেখবা 
sir please mute yourself sir please mute yourself thank you Our speaker has joined, I guess. Yes. Very good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning. Good morning to all. Good morning, sir. Good morning, madam. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Anu Bharato. Good morning, sir. Sir, how are you, sir? Fine, fine. How are you? Uh, we will start our sessions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, it's 9.57 already. Uh, I hope the uh, participants have uh, joined. Joined continuously. And, uh, yeah, they are, they okay. are joining continuously. Okay, after two to three minutes, we will start. Yes, okay. I think I, it's better to begin with begin at 10, actually. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Shurujit sir, can you just wait for a couple of minutes? We request you to wait for a couple of minutes. Okay. Sir, you're not audible. Thank 
I think we can begin now. I think we can begin now. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, so, good morning. A very good morning to everyone who are present here today. And this is the third day of the five-day FTP program that uh, is organized by the IQAC and R&D cell of Greater Kolkata College of Engineering and Management. So thank you everyone for being here, being here for uh, a couple of days. And this is the third day. Uh, we have our speaker today here already, Dr. Shurujit Bari. And uh, he will be talking on attainment of PO and PSO. Let me introduce you. Uh, Dr. Shurujit Bari has received BE degree in electronics and communication engineering from the University of Badwan in the year of 2022. Uh, 2002. Uh, he has obtained MTech degree in VLSI design and microelectronics technology from Jadupur University in the year 2008. He has been awarded PhD degree from Maulana Abdul Salam Azad University of Technology. West Bengal, Macau, that is uh, formerly known as WBUT in the year 2020. Currently, he is working as principal at Shagor Mohabidaloy, Shagor Island, West Bengal. In the past, he worked in the level of lecturer, assistant professor, and associate professor consecutively in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering of Narula Institute of Technology, Kolkata, an autonomous universe institute, NV accredited, NAC accredited, with grade A and NIRF rank under JIS group affiliated to Markout WB. He has around 18 years of teaching experience. He has also he was also the coordinator of internal quality, that is IQAC cell, NIT, since July 2019 to May 2023. His teaching interest on basic electronics engineering, analog electronics circuits solid late state devices, circuit theory and networks and other. Uh, his research interests are on modeling and nano devices and low power VLSI circuits. He has published papers in reputed international journals and conferences. Dr. Bari has chaired in technical sessions of some seminar and international conferences. He has delivered speech in FDPs on technical area and OBE. He is the reviewer of the Journal of Microsystem Technology, Springer, Journal of Nanoparticle, Journal of Electronics, Taylor and Francis. He has been recognized as a NPTEL discipline star in the year 2019 and 2022 by NPTEL India. He has also been recognized as NPTEL star titled NPTEL Domain Scholars in VLSI Design in the year 2023. He is a member of professional society IEEE CAS, IEEE EDS, and the Institution of Engineers India. Dr. Shurojit Bari is currently holding the position of Vice Chair of Executive Committee of IEEE Circuit and System Society CASS, Kolkata Chapter, Kolkata Section. Uh, okay, sir, over to you. You can begin your session. Participants are requested to uh, interact with if sir wants okay you can i think you can mute, unmute yourself uh, otherwise you mute yourself for now and sir you can begin now thank you thank you madam for your nice introduction with me so uh, respected all present over here uh, respected principal madam of better calcutta college of engineering and management and other participants uh, i am very much uh, proud that uh, you are organizing this kind of uh, FDP uh, in your college. So uh, I'm really interested uh, for this kind of FDP to participate also to deliver some uh, some idea and thoughts of what I have gathered the experience in my past institute and also in my current college. Okay. So now I'm sharing the PPT and I will uh, talk on the attainment of the PO and PSO program outcome and the program specific outcome. So let me to share the screen first. Is the screen? Sir, you are not 
audible हेलो यस सर मैं ऑडिबल राइट नाउ यू आर ऑडिबल सर एंड यू आर स्क्रीन इज विजिबल एज वेल ओके 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 नो इशू ओके नो कैन कैन आई स्टार्ट यस सर यस सर ओके ओके आई थिंक देयर इज सम लिटिल बिट प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज़ दे आर इन सागर आइलैंड सो मे बी देयर मे बी सम टाइम लिंक फेलियर ओके ओके सो If if there is any link to your connection, immediately you should contact me either in my mobile or in this chat or directly. Okay, so that I can uh, renew from previous slide. Okay. Sir, actually, your voice is breaking. You are not audible. Sir, can you hear me? हेलो सर यस जस्ट गिव द मैसेज टू द पार्टिसिपेंट प्लीज वेट फॉर आई थिंक देयर इज अ नेटवर्क प्रॉब्लम यस पार्टिसिपेंट्स आर रिक्वेस्टेड टू वेट बिकॉज़ देयर इज ऑब्वियसली अ लिंक फेलियर ऑन आवर स्पीकर्स एंड सुरजीत सर यू आर नॉट ऑडिबल सर ऑडिबल सर सर कैन यू हियर अस Sir, I think no. I think no. Sir, sir, please uh, look into the chat box. You. I I, I communicate with sir. Uh, if you okay. want to talk, I communicate with sir. Am I okay, audible? Okay. Yes. Right now you are audible, but uh, as soon as you as as you start speaking, uh, your voice is breaking and you are not audible again. From from your from your mind, it is clear or it is breaking. Now now it now is clear, sir. now sir, it is okay sir please continue better i guess yes okay 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 just wait i'm My skin is visible. Yes, sir, it's visible. Okay. Okay. So uh, these are the things of today's lecture: education, teaching, learning, instruction, assessment, outcome-based education. Only process. Knowledge categories, action verbs, reference to cognitive process, course outcome, program outcomes, program specific outcomes, course and program articulation matrix, mapping of COs with PSOs, CO attainment, procedure for PO attainment, procedure for PSO. attainment now what is education all of you know that education in its broad sense refers to any act of experience that has formative effect on the mind 
character or physical ability of an individual. Education in this sense never ends. We truly learn from experiences all through our lives. Education in its technical sense is a process by which society deliberately transmits its cultural heritage, its accumulated knowledge, values and skill from one generation to another. Education in this context is concerned with intentional learning like in school, college and universities. Learning. What is learning? Learning is the acquiring new knowledge, behaviors, skill, values, preferences, or understanding. Now, most of we are teacher over here. So, what is teaching? Teaching is a process of helping others to acquire knowledge, skill, and values. Teaching is facilitating learning through intervention by the teachers. Now, whenever we will teach at the time, it is very essential to design the instruction so that learner can understand properly. So what is instruction? Instruction is planning and conducting or arranging a series of learning events to facilitate good learning. So this instruction may be your lesson plan, maybe some course material, maybe some videos, maybe some others. So that means how you will deliver your lecture to the learner so that they can uh, learn nicely, they can grab nicely whatever you want to uh, deliver to them. Now what is assessment? Assessment is a measure of performance. Eval and evaluation, so there are two terminology. One is the assessment and another is the evaluation. So, you know, the assessment is a measure of performance. And what is evaluation? Evaluation is an interpretation of assessment. And the teachers guide students to learn through their assessment. So, you are teaching, simultaneously you are also evaluated. That means you need to assess one student. You need to measure what is the student's learning level. And based on that, you need to give some inputs to the student so that he can learn he can apply his knowledge for some applications. So we can say that assessment drives students' learning. So therefore, the tools related to the assessments, which is so-called the question papers, these are assessment tools. So it is very uh, major part of this teaching learning process, I mean for the assessment. Now, next I'm coming to say about outcome-based education. Everybody know what is education? I told already what is education. Now, what is outcome-based education? An outcome-based education, or simply I say, an outcome is what the learner will be able to do or perform as a result of some learning experience. So that means he will learn something, and after learning, he will be able to do something else from his or her learning experience. So an outcome of education is what the student should be able to do at the end of a program or after the end of a course or after the end of some instructional unit. So here you know the co what is course, what is program and what is instructional unit. So basically the ground level is the instructional unit or the modules. Considering some modules, one case course can be designed. Considering some courses, it may be five to uh, 5 to 8 or 5 to 10, uh, one semesters, and considering some semesters, there is some course, it may be 3 years duration, it may be 4 years duration, or some, it may be 5 years duration, something like that. So, outcome-based education is an approach to education in which decision about the curriculum, instruction, and assessment are driven by the exit learning outcomes. So that means whenever we are adopting the outcome-based education, we must be concerned about how we will design our curriculum. 
but for affiliated institute the design of curriculum is not possible they need to follow the curriculum which has been designed by the university but based on that curriculum for affiliating institute or affiliated institute they can design their instruction and the procedure for internal assessment even there are the external assessment or semester end semester end evaluation is not possible that means question paper uh, preparation is not possible by them but they can send their question paper to university where it will be moderated and then they will uh, they, they, they will prepare some question for the student for the semester end examination but for internal examination you can you can set your question paper you can set your assessment send yourself to uh, for the pur purpose of the measurement of the attainment level of the student i mean to achieve the outcome based education so in this respect we can say that outcome based education is product defined process so that means we are very much concerned about the output and based on the output we need to we need to develop our input so that we can achieve the output and for this uh, undergraduate general program or engineering program there are three levels of outcomes number one is the course outcomes next is the program outcome and next is the program specific outcome now you see this is popularly known to everyone this is the bloom taxonomy cognitive level and you see there are six level of learning the lower is the remember next is understanding next is applying next analyzing evaluate and then the highest level is the create so order is this is this is the lowest remember and highest is the create or higher education general program our objective should inculcate always the highest level of cognitive level for the students so accordingly being a faculty member so we need to uh, we need to prepare everything context to our lecture material content delivery and also the assessment items and assessment tools so in the previous slide i shown you the cognitive level and in this slide i would like to uh, explain about the knowledge categories so there are two things one is the cognitive levels and another knowledge category so what are the knowledge categories usually knowledge categories are grouped into four class one is the factual next one is the conceptual next is the procedural and another is the metacognitive so what is factual basically consists of basic elements students must know if they are to be acquired acquainted with the discipline or solve any of the problems in it for example the students need to know what is celsius what is fahrenheit what is kelvin what is empathy what is informatics what is truth table it is etc so these are some fundamental concepts so that is related to another group of actual and then the conceptual so what is conceptual for example if i be the students of some electrical engineering or for mechanical science or mechanical engineering then i need to know the what is force what is acceleration what is velocity what is mass similarly for electrical and electronics they need to know what is voltage and what is current and how to find out the circuit current circuit voltage similarly for other stream for computer science and some other stream also they need to know what are the uh, some concept based on that they can do something else and next one is the procedural so what is procedural it is basically some process that they need to know for example if i need if i want to cook so that means i need to follow some process if i want to teach then i need to follow some process if i need to do some project i do i need to follow some process so all these are some procedural knowledge categories and the next one is the metacognitive so what is metacognitive metacognitive is completely for your own cognitions so that means you are planning that you will do something else so you can develop your idea you can develop uh, your process and 
that idea you can apply in terms of knowledge in your own work so that is meta cognitive that is not conventional so other three are conceptual factual conceptual procedural they are conventional so meta cognitive is for yours so all these taxonomy of learning are projected in this table uh, so this table actually i have taken uh, some uh, references i'll show the references at the end of my lecture so see the learning is basically in some domains so cognitive domain affective domain psychomotor domain spiritual domain under this cognitive domain we are mainly concentrated on this that is knowledge categories which are uh, four types as i already told you actual conceptual procedural metacognitive and has a process these are the levels of uh, bloom taxonomy that is create evaluate analyze apply understand remember and others are affective domain psychomotor domain spiritual domain but in our case those who are associated with this uh, uh, education higher education uh, we are mainly concentrated about this and other affective domain psychomotor domain spiritual domain these are specific some for some other uh, domain of education so now i am showing some example pictorial view of as an example of all these categories see this is the creative domain of learning all are thinking what will what have to do what is what what has to do all they are thinking so that means it is under the cognitive domain now see this is affective domain of learning brother and sisters so this kind of learning is from feeling or emotion or from induction because this little girl they don't know uh, what is the benefit of drinking this milk but as his elder brother is drinking milk so she also has to drink the milk so that means it is basically induction or affection so this is affective domain of learning because this little girl is learning from his elder brother that the milk is drink in this way and it has some benefits okay now see this is one example of psychomotor domain of learning so see this player whenever they would like to kick the goal at the time the two things is working in his mind so one is the knowledge and another is the physical ability so both two things are required to kick the goal for successful goal okay so uh, here the physical ability is obviously required and also the knowledge because whenever he is taking the ball he is passing some other defender or some other player so that he can kick the goal nicely to the goal post so at the time the psychomotor domain is very much essential and another is as i told you that spiritual domain of learning it is basically integrated experience because all are dancing so that means whenever one girl is dancing others are following or they are dancing in some cadence and all are dancing in some particular cadence okay so this is the spiritual domain of learning or integrated experience as i told you in uh, engineering or in most of the higher education college education we are mainly concentrated about this cognitive domain of learning where there are two things one is the knowledge categories and another is the knowledge process so now i am coming to discuss a little bit about the course objective and course outcome you know course objective it is basically related to the teacher perspective it is not the student's perspective that means what is the objective to deliver this course this is teacher's perspective and what is course outcome it is student's perspective so two things as i told you course objective related to teacher's perspective and course outcome it is related to student perspective and cos are those what student able to do after completion of a particular course already told you what is outcome outcome means student able to do from some learning experience after the completion of his or her learning it may be module level it may be course level it may be program level and it may be program specific level so here cos are that cos are those what students able to do after completion of a particular course for example you are teaching you are the faculty members of the course say for uh, uh introduction to c it is one computer language then i think you have some objective to deliver this course and what is the expectation uh, of from students that after completion of this course what students able to do for example one expectation i can say student able to write some c code or c programming based on some 
uh, some topology or some algorithm, something like that. Okay, so so this is the course outcome. And whenever uh, faculty members or you will be uh, writing some course outcome, you must be concerned about these three things. One, the CEO should be specific. It should not be generic. It should be specific. Then what specific outcome we want to get from our graduates, from our students? It should be measurable. It should be measurable means the question, the CEO should be such that we can measure within the six months duration of semester or effectively three months duration of semester because all of you know that effectively there are 90 days drop test semester examination some events some so effectively we have the 90 days uh, to deliver the lecture 90 hours uh, and for that uh, the course outcome should be specific it should be measurable and it should be achievable within that six months because you are teaching one thing today and you are expecting that I will get the outcome after two years. Uh, no. So immediately after the completion of the course, it is expected that we'll, uh, it is expected that student will do something, able to do something. So these three things need to be kept in mind. The course should be specific, it should be measurable, and it should be excavated. And the next writing the Sir, you are not audible. Sir, you're not audible. Am I audible now? So still your voice is breaking at some point. Hmm. You are audible now, sir. Please continue. Am I audible? Yes, right yes, now you are audible. Okay. okay, whenever I'm not audible, you please inform me because their network connection is very poor in Sagar Island. Okay, due to its uh, locational disadvantage. Anyway, so if not audible, then you should inform me. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So, as I told you, uh, that for course outcome, to write one course outcome, this three component is very, very essential. The performance component, then conditional components, and then the criteria components. So, performance component means what is expectation from a student from a particular course outcome. Conditional components means prerequisite level to perform. And criteria components means what is the level that we are expecting from a particular course outcome. So now I'll show you one example. So before that, you just recall uh, these are the uh, these are the action verbs of Bloom taxonomy, different action verb from different levels of Bloom taxonomy. So I skip this slide. I think you are very much familiar with this. Now coming to discuss about uh, one example of course outcome for one subject consider say 
analog electronics subject which is the subject of electronics and communication engineering you see the first CEO able to construct and analyze performance of single stage amplifier circuit using BJT in audio frequency range with the help of load line analysis and H parameter model. So again, I am reading the course outcome. Able to construct at Sir, you are not audible yet. Sir, you are not audible. I think the screen froze as well. Onubrata, sir, are you here? Can you can you uh, contact, sir? Participants are uh, requested to wait and understand the situation because uh, the network issues in Shagor Islands is... Mm -hmm. Sir, are you here? <laughs> Onubrata, sir, if you are here, please contact with sir. Participants are requested to wait. Bear with the situations. The issue is currently being taken care of. Participants are requested to wait and bear with the situation because the as our speakers are said that his internet internet connection is unstable on because of the location. It is being taken care of. Please wait. Sir, already contacted and Sir is joining soon with another network. Okay. As, as there thank is some you, problem in his network, so Sir is joining by another network. Please wait. Shortly thank he's you. joining. Yes. Thank you, Rajoshi, Sir, for informing.
Speaker sir will uh, join in five minutes. Please wait. He will join soon. In five minutes, please wait. The internet connection is unbearably unstable there on Shagor Island, if you know the location. You will join in five minutes. The participants are requested to wait. We are very sorry. Participants, please stay in the meeting. Our speaker will join soon. As soon as he has recovered his internet connection, he will join soon. In five minutes.
Pikar is joining soon. Please wait. He is being contacted and he is trying to join by another network. As we told, he is joining soon. Please wait. The lecture was interrupted because of unstable uh, internet connections. It's currently being uh, solved. So please wait, wait for a bit. We ask for your patience and uh, please bear with the situation.
Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. You okay. are clear. Okay, okay. Sorry for the interruption because there is a network problem. I, I have now been connected to another network. Okay. Oh, uh, I think there should not be any interruption anyway. But still, uh, we cannot say any time taking in problem may occur. Anyway, so now I am sharing one screen and I am again starting my lecture. Please wait. Yes, sir. Okay. Is the screen visible? Okay. Uh, yes, sir, it's visible. Okay. So I think I have completed uh, up to this action verb. Uh, or I can start uh, two or three slides before. Please suggest. I will borrow it. I will borrow it. So, uh, please, uh, I, please see the slide. So, as I told you, uh, that course objective is related to teacher's perspective, course outcome related to students' perspective, and COR, those, uh, what students are able to do after completion of a particular course. CO should be specific, measurable, and achievable. And whenever we shall write some CO, uh, it is essential that these three components should be there. One is the performance component, one is the conditional components, and another is the criteria components. So these are the action verbs. I think these action verbs are popularly uh, known to you. These are the action verbs for some different levels of Bloom taxonomy uh, learning levels. And this is one example of course outcome for the course analog electronic circuit. So I would like to explain this course outcome one, you see, able to construct and analyze performance of single stage amplifier circuit using BJT, bipolar junction transistor in audio frequency range with the help of load line analysis and age parameter model. So try to check whether this course outcome uh, has addressed all this requirement or not. First of all, I told you that whenever we shall write some course outcome, it should be specific, measurable, and achievable. Now check whether this course outcome one is measurable, achievable, and specific or not. So see, as mentioned in this course outcome, it has been mentioned it is a single stage amplifier. And we need to, uh, we, the student need to construct the, and analyze the amplifier performance using bipolar junction transistors. So obviously, all these are specific. Okay, and it is also measurable. Measurable means we can set some questions paper or assessment item to measure this CO. And another thing is achievable. Achievable means uh, construct and analysis performance of single stage amplifier. So I think it is possible to achieve within the six months period of semester. So that's why I told you, whenever course outcomes should be retained, it should be specific, it should be measurable, and it should be achievable. Now, the next part of this course outcome that it should have these three components performance component, conditional component, and criteria component. So, what is performance component? What is the expectation from the student from this course outcome after completion of this particular module or topic? And the conditional component means what is the prerequisite or basis based on which he or she can perform. And next is the criteria component. Criteria component means what is the level of performance. There are different level of performance. At which level we, or whether level has been mentioned in this course outcome or not. So see, whether these three components are there or not. So that's why I mentioned that identify the performance component, conditional component, and criteria component. And also judge whether it is specific, measurable, and achievable. The second answer already been explained. And for the first performance component, performance component means what student will do. So what is what student will do? You see, able to construct and analyze performance of single stage amplifier. So that is basically the performance component. Able to construct, construct and analyze, construct and analyze performance of a single stage amplifier. It is the performance of the uh, course outcome or students' performance in this course outcome. 
So it has been identified. This is the performance component. Conditional component. What is the conditional component? There is a basis or prerequisites based on which the student can perform. So what is that? That is with the help of load line analysis and age parameter. That means if student has the idea, if he or she has the idea about the load line and the age parameter model, then they can only construct and analyze the performance of single stage amplifier. So that's why these two components are embedded in this course outcome. And the third one is the criteria component. Criteria from amplifier. So see, different levels of amplifiers are there. One is audio amplifier, one is video amplifier, one is high frequency amplifier. So various kinds of micro amplifier, various kinds of amplifiers are there. Now from this course outcome, which kind of amplifier we are going to design or students going to design? That is single stage amplifier using BGT in audio frequency range. That means students able to design from this course outcome, that means it is expectation, the students able to design one single stage amplifier, multi-stage amplifier is also there, but we are not expecting from student to design the multi-stage amplifier from this course outcome. Only single stage amplifier, he or she can design. So single stage amplifier using what? Using BGT, then it's specific, because amplifier can be designed using operational amplifier, using uh, field effect transistor also, but here students able to design using bipolar junction transistor. So it is very much specific. And in which frequency range? It is audio frequency range, it is radio frequency range, or it is video frequency range, or any other frequency range. It is mentioned it is audio frequency range. So that means uh, it is very much clear from this course outcome that what is the performance of the student and what is the condition, basis on which he can perform, and what is the criteria component. So in this way, it is suggested that other course outcome or course outcome for a particular course need to be written and need to be uh, uh, need to be used for the assessment of the students. Okay, some other course outcome are also mentioned over. I am not reading all the things. Only uh, one is sufficient. If you are able to understand this, I think you can do. You can write down course outcome for your course very nicely. And uh, it is also suggested that number of course outcome for a particular course, if it is theoretical subject, then it is five to six. Because if a large number of course outcome there, for example, say someone can write down course outcome say 10 to 15, but 10 to 15 course outcome is not acceptable. Why not acceptable? Because all the course outcome cannot be acceptable within six months span, effectively three months span of semester examination or semester duration. So that's why it is suggested that if we consider five to six course outcome for a theoretical subject and four to five, four to five for laboratory based subject or practical oriented subject, then uh, it is very much uh, possible to achieve all this course outcome in a semester. And it is also suggested that course outcome should be framed such a way it encounters the higher order cognitive level of the student because whenever we shall write down the course outcome at the time we need to use the Bloom taxonomy action verb that already I, I mentioned in the previous slide. This action verb need to be used. So for all these action verb you see the highest cognitive levels are, you see that uh, applying, analyzing, evaluating, creating. But if you write down that the course outcome, student able to understand amplifier, student able to understand operation amplifier, these are not acceptable in case of engineering program. Because we want that from engineering student or from student from, from higher education or higher study that uh, they should uh, they should do some or highest level to be applied. For that, it is suggested that applying, analyzing, evaluating, or creating uh, the action verb which are under this group, that action verb need to be used. Not only uh, need to be used, but need to be uh, implemented. Okay, so that's why it is suggested that you should consider the higher quantity level of the students. Now moving on to the next slide. Uh, that is program outcome. So course outcome, as I told you, that there are three different levels of outcome. One is the course outcome, that is course level, and another is the program outcome, that is program level, and another is the program specific outcome, which is also program level, but it's specific to the program. So what is POS? POS address that students able to do after completion of a program. You know that if we consider some modules, then one course can be framed. If we consider some courses, then one 
semester semester can be framed if we consider some semester courses then program can be framed currently in india most uh, ect approved program most of the courses are for four year duration some three years courses are also uh, some three years and five year courses are also diploma programs are usually three year courses and some architecture like uh, architecture or some other courses are five years programs and most of the courses uh, most of the programs are uh, four years programs so there are two terminology one is the course and another is the program course is the part of the program in our terminology okay so now i am mainly concentrated about this five years uh, four years program so what is program of them that students able to do after completion of a program and as defined by nba there are 12 number of pos for graduate engineering program and irrespective of the program i am mainly talking about the engineering whether the students are coming from civil engineering mechanical engineering electrical engineering computer science engineering electronics and combination engineering the 12 pos are common for all program or all, all programs okay so pos are same for all program and it is already been defined by national board of accreditation nba now for general program for example say ba bsc ma msc bcom mcom law pos need to be identified by the accrediting university if it is accredited college or board of studies bos our if it is autonomous college then for autonomous college then obviously the program outcome for all these general program uh, need to be defined or framed by the board of studies only so now see it is the program outcome which which are already been defined by uh, national board of accreditation nba the number one is the engineering knowledge second is the problem analysis third is design development of solution fourth is the investigation of complex problems fifth is the modern tool uses sixth is the engineering society seventh is environment sustainability eight is ethics Nine is individual teamwork. Ten is communication. Eleven is project management finance, and twelve is the lifelong learning. So, see in most of the curriculum, this PO number one, two, three, four, and five can be addressed easily, considering your courses or program. But sometimes it is found that PO number six, seven, eight. Cannot be addressed properly. Although ethics is inherent to all the courses during delivery of lecture or delivery of practical sessions or say uh, field work, ethics is inherent. But directly, uh, one or two courses are there. You can find, you may find out one and two courses is there which are directly related to ethics. So that's why I told you that program outcomes one to five can be nicely addressed by the courses. Six, seven, eight. Sometimes it is difficult, and from nine to eleven, again it is possible, and sometimes it is also difficult to address this eleven. But uh, currently, most of the program includes the project, so through that it can be addressed. Okay, only one course is there, that is project. Through that project work, it may be uh, starting from. Second year to fourth year, if project is embedded in your curriculum, uh, that project can address all these POs. But uh, the other courses, uh, other courses cannot address all these POs. Okay, so that's why you need to understand there is some curricular gap, and to meet this gap, to meet this gap, so some. Co curricular, extra curricular activity need to be performed by the program itself so that uh, the attainment or achievement of this uh, program outcomes can be uh, can, can be possible, can, can be uh, achieved. Okay, so these are, these are the 12 program outcomes. Now I am coming to program specific outcome. Program specific outcome. This indicates that students able to do after completion of a specific program. As I told you, the POs are common. It is irrespective of the direction or dimension of the programs. 
it is common for civil engineering mechanical engineering electrical engineering computer science ec etc but pso it is a particular program ni saapde ni enu saapde vele yes any queries pso is related to a particular program pso is related to say electronics combination engineering it is related to computer science and uh computer science and uh, say data science etc for example the graduates which are belonging to electronics and communication engineering our restriction that specifically they can uh, do some circuit on electronics and communication engineering similarly we are not expecting that the student which is belonging to program electronics and communication engineering uh, will construct one bridge not possible so that is the difference so that means if it is related to program then specifically the outcome we want to get and if it is program outcome it is irrespective of the program that what student able to achieve for mechanical engineering yes what is our expectation the expectation student should construct some bridge for civil engineering able to construct some buildings but we are not expecting that electronics and computer engineering will construct some buildings or vice versa so that's why students able to do after completion of a specific programs and it is expected that there are two to four number of psos from a programs and psos are not defined by any way it is usually defined by board of studies of graduate engineering program whether you are autonomous college or you are affiliated college now these are some example of psos which has been taken from bms college of engineering bangalore this is pso1 analyze and design electronic system for signal processing and communication application so it is specific to electronics communication engineering second pso demonstrate the conceptual domain knowledge and respect to architecture design analysis and engineering development in data communication network computer networking so this is also specific to electronics and communication engineering third one is identify and apply domain specific tools for design analysis synthesis and validation of vlsi and communication system it is also specific to that program however if you revisit all these program outcome pio which was which has been which have been defined by nba it is nothing is mentioned related to specific program it is general engineering knowledge that means students should have engineering knowledge they can able they able to apply knowledge of mathematics science engineering fundamentals and an engineering specialization to solution of complex engineering problem so here none of the uh, programs name is mentioned all are generic and pso is specific so that is the main difference between pos and psos so now Uh, there is some concept of mapping you know for the attainment purpose we need to map coj with poj and coj with pso so for strong mapping say co1 would like to map strongly with po1 so at the time we should use the value 3 if it is moderately mapped then value 2 if it is weakly mapped then it is value 1 and if there is no mapping then it is suggested you should put one hyphen because it is not guaranteed that the coj will map with all the pos it may address some pos not all the pos so should be mapped and this is one example of mapping for a one particular course that is mapping of coj with pos so consider the course code is ec402 it is and our electronic circuit for a particular program so different values are shown over here it is mapped with po1 to po5 with this corresponding values po6 po7 po8 there is no mapping with this course again there is some mapping with po9 po10 po11 and po12 and accordingly other cos are also mapped but during this mapping what is my suggestion that whenever you will put these values 3 to 1 or no map you should have your own justification for example you are giving 3 then it is essential then why you are putting this 3 if you put 2 and what is your justification why you are putting this 
two. And if you put one, what is your justification? That is justification to you. Nobody will ask you that why you are giving three, why you are giving two, why you are giving one, and why this CO is not mapped with other POs. That is justification to you. But if you are able to justify to the expert whenever they will be visiting your institute, admission team or peer team, at the time you need to explain. There may be some little bit deviation from your concept and the other faculty member that will be accepted. But with some due justification. For example, say you need, we want to say this is PO9. If PO9 is CO1, so I am just showing you what is my CO1. I'll just go back to this. So consider this one, CO1, able to construct, analyze performance of single stage amplitude circuit using VGT in audio frequency range with the help of load line analysis and H parameter model. So obviously, to achieve this CO1, uh, obviously the student should have some engineering knowledge, engineering science. So that's why it is strongly mapped. Similarly, you see, for this problem analysis is also required. So that's why mapping value is given. Some design part is also there, so mapping value is, is there. Sometimes they also need to, uh, they need require some research based knowledge. So that's why code is also at risk. And sometimes also you are using to at least this PO, some modern tool, some simulation software is also used. Modern tool does not mean always the simulation software. It also at least some uh, modern instruments. So all these are under the category of modern tools. They are using some say DSO, uh, digital storage oscilloscope for measuring the performance of the amplifier. So that's why we can also address this CO1 with some higher value of this uh, PO5. Now see, as per my perspective, that for that particular CO, the engineering society, environment and sustainability and directly ethics is not related. So that's why no value is mentioned. So see, no mapping is there. Again, you consider PO9, what is PO9? PO9 is related to individual and teamwork. So obviously, so whenever one student will design and analyze one amplifier, sometimes his own concept is required, so that is individual. Sometimes he need to work in a team, so that's why it is also uh, this. She also address this Q9, and also see communication. Communication means. Uh, as for my perspective, that CO is related to communication. Communication means it is verbal communication and also the non-verbal communication. So whenever you complete the project or you will carry out the project, at the time what you need to do, you need to some documentation, uh, you need some presentation. So that's why all these are related to communication. So to construct the amplifier, obviously he should require, he need to purchase some components. So that's why he should have some idea about the management and finance. And finally, you see, I have also given some value in PO2 that is lifelong learning. So that means if the student is able to design some amplifier using VGT single stage, he can do some other amplifier in future also. Whenever he will be employed by some company in the core sector, at the time that concept is essential. So that's why this PO12 has also been mapped with this CO1. But it is up to you. If you put some value, then you need some justification. There is no boundary, there is no restriction, you can do yourself. And you see, these are the average value. If we consider all these POs of these columns, then we are getting this average value. This value actually required for the attainment purpose. Sometimes individual row can also be used, but the average value can also be used. That is up to you. Again, I am saying there is no restriction because there is no defined rule. There is no different rule how to calculate the attainment. Your methods, your policy is accepted. But for a institute, it is accepted, it is suggested for a institute or for a college. All departments should follow only one method. So this is one matrix which is uh, essential for the attainment calculation of matrix. And this matrix is known as the Program articulation matrix. This matrix is known as the course articulation matrix. This term is taken from the NBA, where the course outcomes are mapped with the POs. This is course articulation matrix, and it is program articulation matrix where for a particular course is mapped with the POs. Actually, these values, these values are taken from the last row, with the average values of these of these columns. That means, in on an average, 
this course is mapped to all these POs. Somewhere it is not mapped, somewhere it is mapped with some strong value, some weaker value, and some moderate value. So in program articulation matrix, we need to incorporate all the all the courses of the program. If it is four years programs, if there are more or less say 64 programs or 65 programs from first year to uh, fourth year, all the courses need to incorporate in this table, in this matrix. So that's why it is known as the program articulation matrix. So this is one first year courses, and this is the courses are already have uh, they highlighted. So this is 402, and this last row value is placed over here. Some other courses are also there from first semester to eighth semester. So not all the courses shown over here. Few courses are or three courses are shown as an example. Similarly, we need to uh, map to a course outcome with program specific outcome for the attainment purpose. So again, this is the example of this uh, mapping of COs with PSOs. Here it will be PSOs, not POs. PSO, um, COs with PSOs. And uh, fortunately, here three PSOs have been considered and uh, with their values. And it is the last row, it is the average values for a particular course. Similarly, this kind of matrix need to be developed for the attainment of PSO, again, there is some typography in there, it will be PSO. So, all again, all courses need to be considered which are related to PSO. Okay. So, now I am coming to gradually to procedure for the attainment of the uh, POs and also the PSO to see what is assessment. There are two terminology. So assessment means process of data collection to measure the degree of attainment of course goal. And assessment technique may vary with goals. So assessment is usually conducted, for example, class test, grand viva, group discussion, oral presentation, assignments, case studies, term paper, lab report, practical and theoretical examination, etc. So all these are the assessment tools which are carried out throughout the semester. And they, here there is provision to rectify the student's difficulties. For example, you have conducted one class test and you have evaluated, I mean you have uh, given some marks over there. And if, uh, if the marks is not up to the mark, at the time you can arrange one remedial class and you can give some feedback to student that you are not so good in this subject or this is your level and as a faculty members as a course instructor you can arrange some remedial clubs or some other methodology so that student can rectify uh, his or her problem and what is evaluation evaluation the the assessment data quantified for each student for all the relevant assessment for example say you are in your pattern say you have two class test one quiz and uh, say one group discussion and you need to collect all the data or uh, performance of the student from all these test items and ultimately you need to place all this uh, all this value their marks to uh, the grades so during evaluation we usually declare their grades after the semester end examination so during evaluation there is no provision to rectification but for assessment there is provision for rectification of the student. So that is the most interest for the outcome based education. And in OB, following types of assessments are usually followed to at least the attainment of COs, PSOs, BOs, and PSOs. Number one is diagnostic assessment. It is basically conducted before the start of the course to know the level of the students, prerequisite, or the strength weakness of the students. Second is the formative assessment in terms of uh, cumulative internal examination. Uh, you also usually do that. I already given the examples like assignment, quiz, short test, report writing, PowerPoint presentation, group discussion. And next one is the summative assessment that is semester end examination. And it is usually conducted at the end of semester. So three types of assessment usually conducted uh, for the attainment purpose, diagnostic test, but the marks from diagnostic we usually not consider because it is only to know the student's strength weakness about the prerequisite for a particular. So 
course, but this formative assessment and the summative assessment, the marks related to this formative assessment and summative assessment are considered for the grade declaration of the students. But during the formative assessment, there is provision to rectify the students' difficulties and the problems of learning. But for summative assessment, then whenever they are appearing semester examination or at the, based on the grade of the semester examination, it is not possible to take the necessary action to rectify their problems. Now, this is one example of the target level. So, you know, the CU attainment should be obtained through these two process. One is CIE, as already mentioned, and semester and examination, ACC. CIE is related to formative assessment, and ACC is the semester and examination. And for outcome based education, obviously, you need to set the target. Otherwise, how can you know? Uh, how can you achieve? So, that's why the target is up to you based on the university result or based on the student intents or their average results you can set the target this is one example but it is not uh, restricted to you you can do yourself with due justification so here this is one example target level one so left side that 60 percent students must score 60 percent and above for example if in a class there are 100 students so being a faculty member or being a program coordinator or being, uh, being a department, our target that at least 60% students should course 60% and above. So that means individually students should course 60%, but as a whole, 60% student out of 100 students, at least 60 students must course 60% and above. So this is our target level one. So what is the next target level? That means we'll be very much grateful if the student 70% students should must score the 60% and above. This is target level 2 and target level 3, 80% students must score 60% and above. So see, right hand side, hello, is not varying. It is fixed. But if you want to vary, you can vary. That is up to you. But here, for simplicity, the right hand side is not varied. Only left hand side is being varied. So if it is 60% students score 60% and above, it is target level 1. A 70% student must score 60% and above, this is target level 2. And if 80% student must score 60% and above, it is target level 3. And these are some uh, uh, these, these are some tests. These are some tests through which uh, through which you can conduct some uh, assessment uh, cumulative through cumulative internal assess, uh, evaluation say class test, slot test, assignment, slot test, all are of maximum 30 marks and it is the policy. This policy may vary from faculty member to faculty member, from department to department, from program to program. That is up to you. For example, here we see class test one, six number question uh, is given. Total number of question is six for class test one. Question number one, two, three, it is related to assess the CO1. Question number four to assess CO2. No question is given to assess CO3. Question number five is given to assess CO4. Question number six is given to assess the CO5. Again, there is no question to assess the CO6. Similarly, class test two, you see only one question is given to assess the CO1. There are two questions given to CO2, one question is given to CO3, two questions is given to assess CO4, and none of the questions is given to assess the CO5 and CO6. So what is what I want to say that you should distribute the question such a way before the commencement of semester, there should be some uh, instruction delivery method or lesson plan delivery method so that the all CO should be addressed through some test. So this is some uh, summary that how we will conduct the test internally to assess the students. Now these are the uh, these are their marks which have been obtained from all these internal examination. So calculation to measure the CU attainment CIE from various tests. Only CO1 is presented over here. This is maximum marks for CO1, 6. In test 2, this is test 1, question 1. Maximum marks is 6. Test 1, question 2, because see how many question is given? 3 question is given in test 1. So question number one, maximum mark six. Question number two, maximum marks is six. 
question number three, maximum mass is six. All are from test one. And C, from test two, from test two, only one question is given to measure the CO1. So that's why this is question number one. This is from test two, maximum mass is six. And C, another question is given from test three. Only one question. So therefore, here it is mentioned test three. That is only one question. So how many question given? One, two, three, four, five question is given uh, throughout the internal assessment to measure the course outcome one. But again, here I am saying there is no restriction. You can do yourself. There is flexibility that what will be the maximum mark. This mark can also be varied. Someone can see this is. Uh, two marks. This is three marks. This is four marks, or any other marks you can give yourself. No issue. Now these are the student name and their respective score for a particular questions. For example, see total 141 students are there. The first student, you see, his score is three from this question one out of six, and he also attempted question two. Score is three. Also attempt question three, and his score is three. And attempt in question one for test two, three. That means he has attempt all the question in all the test. So what is the total marks? Total marks is fifteen. That means if we add three, 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 total fifteen. And what is the overall marks? Total marks considering all the tests which has been allotted to CO one that is thirty. So out of thirty, what is his score? He is fifteen. So total attempt thirty. Yeah, his attempt is thirty. Total attempt thirty, but score is fifteen. So what is the maximum course? Ma maximum score is what is the percentage? Percentage is fifty. Now check whether this student has achieved the target level. At least target level one or not? Answer is no. Why not? Because my first target is that individual student must score sixty percent and above, but it fa he fails. So although he attempted all the questions, his score is fifty percent, but his score is not sixty percent. Considering all the questions for a particular CO, so that's why there are no answer. No is given. Whereas you see the second student, his score considering all fifty six point six seven, there is also answer no. On the other hand, you see the third student, Aditya Kamal Saha. Although he has not attempted all the questions throughout the semesters, uh, th throughout the uh, internal internal assessment, but his score is 19 out of 30. So in percentage, is 79.16. So now, if we test that whether it has been achieved or not, answer is yes, achieved. Accordingly, the all students. Uh, all students' achievement context to that CIA has been placed in this table. Now, after uh, presenting this table, we need to count how many students, how many students achieved this course outcome one or attained this course outcome one, and it is found 105 number of students attained the course outcome one out of 141. So now we shall check the left hand side. Our target is 60 percent or 70 percent or 80 percent. The right hand side is okay. 105 students have achieved the right hand side. Now we shall check. You see, CO1. If we divide, if we divide that 140, 121. You can check yourself. That is 15 divided by 141. If I am not wrong. Then you may find out 74 percent student. So that means percentage of student whose score is greater than 60 percent. We know the number of students whose score greater than is 60 percent is 105. But what is the percentage of student whose score is greater than 60 percent? If you take the division, you will get this 74 percent, 5 percent. If the calculation is not wrong, then which level you see as per this policy? It is greater than seventy percent. So, which level has been met? That is level two. See the level two. That's why it is mentioned the level level two has been achieved. Similarly, for other course outcome, that type of table need to be 
framed, the marks need to be entered, and you need to take the decision whether that particular CO has been achieved or not. And overall, for this particular course, this course achievement is 74.48 percent, and on an average, it is level two. So, up to this, we have considered the attainment. Uh, or the assessment of the COs through internal examination. Now, from university examination, if it is affiliated college, if it is affiliated college, it is not possible that for a particular student, for which question or which CO the student has achieved this amount of marks or this marks, it is not possible. Because after getting the examination, the, 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 the answer script is sent to university and it will be evaluated by some, uh, there is some coding decoding parts because it is not possible to know which student has given the answer. Some coding part, decoding purpose is there, coding purpose is there, only university can know that. So it is not possible to know by the college which student has scored a particular marks for particular CO. So that's why for affiliated college, not for autonomous college, for affiliated college, so what you need to do, you need to consider the overall result from the university for a particular course. So if it consider, say it is found that 80% student score is 60% and above in the semester examination for EC201. For example, say it is basic electronics or analytical or whatever be the course, introduction to C, you count that number of outstanding marks O, that means it is in between 90 and above, in between 80 and 89, in between 70 and uh, six, uh, 70 and 79, so on and so forth. According to you, try to get the decision that how many percentage of student score is greater than 60 percent. In case of Macau WB, Molan Abulkara Majad University of Technology, you know very well that if student scores is B, that means it is in the span of uh, 60 to uh, 69, as I recall. So that means you need to consider only B, A, E, and O outstanding marks. For other university, maybe some different patterns or it may be some percentage. But if it is your target level, minimum target level is 60 percent. At the time, you need to consider accordingly. So consider say from the results of this EC201, it is found that 80 percent students score 60 percent and above. So what we'll do now? We shall. Consider this marks only, this marks only, or this span only to to fix the target level. So 80% of students score 60% means the target level three from university examination or semester end examination. Okay, so now we shall calculate the overall attainment for the CO. So you see, so you see here some policies there as already mentioned. You see. So, attainment of COs of EC201, this is on post score, through semester and examination is 3. As already mentioned, that 80% students score 60% and above, so this is 3. And from internal examination, it has been found that average is level 2. So, what is the overall attainment of this CO? The overall attainment of CO for this particular scale in scale of 3 is 40% average of CO attainment through CIE and 60% of CO attainment through HSC. This is also again policy and how much percentage will be taken from CIE assessment and how much percentage of uh, assessment will be taken from the HSC results. So this is one policy 40% and 60% but it may be according to your institute or your program, it may be 20, 60, it may be 50, 50, it may be other values. That is up to you with due justification. So here it is 40% average of CIE, CIE and 60% from ACC. So see 40% of 2 and 60% of 3. So that means overall attainment of CO in scale of 3. This is CO attainment. So why I have shown this CO attainment? Because this attainment value is required. To calculate the PU attainment, consequently the PSO attainment. So now I'm coming to discuss about the procedure of PU attainment. Measurement of PU attainment should be carried out considering the direct assessment 
it includes the CIE and ACC already it was mentioned and another is the indirect assessment. Indirect assessment means it is basically feedback or survey from student exit survey, employee survey, co-curricular activity, extracurricular activity and maybe some other assessment tools. But we need to follow direct assessment and indirect assessment. Again, there is some percentage. Now, how much percentage you will consider for direct and how much percentage you will consider for indirect? It is up to you. And usually it is 80% is taken from the direct assessment and 20% is taken from the indirect assessment. But, but for your institute, you may take 70%, 30%, 50%, 50%, whatever you want. But most of the people follow like this 80% from direct and 20% from the uh, indirect. In NV also, it is not the thumb rule, but they have mentioned 20% and 80%, 80%. Now, this is one table. This table is actually taken from the NBA website. These are the different courses and these are the program outcome PO1 to PO12. So, here we, need, we shall place the attainment value that is contribution of this particular course C101 towards the attainment of PO1, PO2, PO3, so on and so forth. Similarly, for this course also, C102, what is its contribution towards the attainment of PO1 to PO12? So here, all courses need to be considered from first semester to eighth semester for the calculation of PO attainment, and it is direct. Similarly, there is one table for indirect attainment. This is survey one, survey two, survey three, and here again, uh, there should be some contribution of survey one towards the all attain all POs, survey two all POs, so on and so forth. Now see the results. First, to place the data or place the contribution of a particular course to the PO attainment, first we need to recall what is the what is the mapping value of a particular course with the program outcomes. So I told you whenever we shall discuss about the course articulation matrix, there is one average value. We can go back. There is one average value in the last row. You see. This is the average value. This is the average value in the last row for this program. So this value basically considered has to be considered whenever we shall calculate the attainment of PO through all these courses. I mean through direct method. So in this case, I have considered another program, another course, which is basic electronics is 201. You see, its mapping is shown. That is last row. Last row, how it is mapped? It is mapped accordingly. A mapping of this program with this PO1 is 3, PO2, 2, PO3, 2, PO4, 1. There is no map from PO5 to PO8. Again, there is mapping 1, 1, 1, 2, respectively for PO9, PO10, PO11, and PO12. So, this mapping value is very, very essential for the attainment. Now, you recall what is the CU attainment of EC201 through cumulative assessment, CIE, and also through SSE, semester and integration. It is already been calculated. It is 2.6. This is 2.6. So this value is also required. This is 2.6. Now we shall fill this field that is contribution of this course, particular course, EC201 was the attainment of this PO1 to PO12. So we have two things, one is the mapping and another is the attainment through direct method. It is 2.6. Now it's state that mapping of this EC201 with this PO1 is 3. And what is the attainment value through direct method? 2.6. Then what will be the reflected value over here? It will be 2.6. That means 2.6. That means what do you want to say? Uh, that is 2.6. Let me to use the pen so that you can understand. That is, you see, if attainment value is 2.6, 2.6 into what is the mapping? It is 3 divided by what is the maximum mapping possible? That is 3. So 2.6 into 3 by 3, that means it becomes 
2.6. Now, if the mapping value is 2, then what should be the value? That is 2.6 into 2 divided by what is the maximum mapping possible? That is 3. But here you see the mapping is 2. Mapping is 2. So, if you calculate this, I think you will get this value. Okay. Similarly, here you see there is only 1. Mapping value is 1. So, 2.6 into 1 by 3. Okay. And in this case, see, there is no mapping. So, no value need to be entered over here. So, that means this is the contribution of a particular course towards the mapping of PO1 to PO12 through direct method. Similarly, we need to consider all the courses which are being taught in a semester, semester 1 to semester 8. All the course contribution of all the courses, contribution of the courses towards the mapping of PO1 to PO12 need to be filled or placed in this table for the measuring of attainment of POs through direct method. So, see, all courses are placed. Dot dot means these courses are there, it is not shown. BC201, here this value, exactly this value has been reflected. There 2.6, 1.73, 1.73, 0 0.87, so on and so forth. So, exactly this value has been reflected over here for this course. Similarly, some other courses are there. Then, take the average, column wise. Take average of column wise. So, these are the average considering the all courses under this PO1, PO2, PO3, PO4, up to PO12. So, all these are the average value. That means through direct attainment, the PO1 attainment value is 2.1 out of scale 3 and similarly for all other views. So, as I told you that to get the overall attainment, we also consider, we have, also have to consider the indirect attainment through survey. Here, one survey report is mentioned. From survey 1, say it is uh, exit student survey. So, some questionnaire is need to be framed. You need to set some questions and you need to get some feedback for a particular PO1 uh, for a particular program outcome, PO1 to PO12, and you need to accumulate the marks. And scale of 3, again, you need to average it and you need to place in this table. Say for survey 1, the attainment for PO1 is 2.1, for PO2, 1.2, so on and so forth. Similarly, if you survey 3, if you conduct three surveys, then all or four surveys, whatever you up to you, uh, you need to place all these values. And again, you need to take the average column wise. So it is found the column wise, the indirect attainment values for PO1 to PO12 as mentioned in the last rows. Now we shall carry out the final attainment of PO. So what is the policy? Policy is 80% of direct attainment and 20% of indirect attainment. Now, if we consider only PO1, so through direct attainment, what is the PO1 value? 2.1. And for PO1 indirect attainment, 2.8. So, how will be calculated? 80% of 2.1 because it is direct value. And indirect value is 2.8. So, 20% of 2.1. If you calculate, you will get 2.24. So, this is the overall attainment of the PO1. Similarly, other POs need to be calculated. So, see, it has been uh, in this table, all these values are presented. Direct attainment, all these are, these are the values, indirect attainment, these are the values, and this last one, last rows values, considering this policy, 80% of direct and 20% of indirect. And there should be some, so these are the attainment value. Similarly, uh, there should be some target level of attainment of POs, as like the CU attainment. And these target values usually set uh, in different way. Uh, you can set the target value in your boss, BOS, Board of Studies, or you can get it from program articulation matrix. Okay, so that target value need to be set and based on that you can compare for example say if the target value for this po1 is 2.0 and you compare what is the attainment value target value is consider say this is 2.0 say this is 2.0 it is the target this is target value 2.0 out of scale 3 and your attainment is 2.24 so it is more than 2.0 so that means it has been achieved but if the attainment value is say 
then you need to compare it has not been achieved then you need to take the necessary action to achieve this moreover also you try to your target level and this target level may be increased from 2.22 to 2.0 or 2.2.1 or 2.2 whatever you want you may increase or if not achieved then the necessary action need to be taken okay so similarly the attainment of pso need to be carried out similar method same method target assessment the tools are cie and acc and indirect assessment page Sorry, I was disconnected. I'm sharing again my PPT. So similarly, you see, uh, this is the mapping of EC two zero one with the PSOs three two two, and what is the attainment value already been calculated two point six. And based on this mapping, the contribution of attainment towards the PSO need to be reflected. Is 2.6 because your mapping is maximum. Here it is 2, so that is 2.6 into 2 by 3, it is 1.73. And here it is 2. Again, the same value should be reflected over here. So accordingly, you need to consider the courses which are mapped with the PSOs and their corresponding contribution. Uh, towards the towards the attainment of this PSOs and same method averaging you need to consider the last row for the direct attainment similarly survey results and averaging of all the surveys it is indirect assessment and again the same policy may be used 80 percent of direct attainment 20 percent of indirect attainment so if we calculate the 80 percent of 2.8 and 20 percent of 2.7 because you see this is 2.8 for PSO1 here PSO1 is so this is and PSO1 2.7 so 80% of 2.8 and 20% of 2.7 so our out of scale is 2.78 okay so these are the uh, overall attainment of PSO1 considering the all courses through direct method and indirect method similarly here you also you need to fix some target levels and this target level need to be fixed at the uh, BOS meeting and that need to be considered through its minutes. Okay, so almost I uh, this to the end of this presentation, first of presentation. Uh, so in this presentation, I have uh, mentioned what is output, outcome based education and the attainment calculation of COs, POs and PSOs and other things like what are the different knowledge level, knowledge category as per the Bloom taxonomy uh, that is uh, being discussed in this session. So the references that I have used to uh, present on this slide, it is NPTEL online courses from Professor Ranger Rao, IC Bangalore and NPTEL online courses, Professor S.K. Dasmandal, IIT Karpo and some others uh, book like Kothari and some other different sources there. So, thank you all for your patience. Now, if you have any queries, then you can ask me. Thank you so much, sir. Participants are requested to pose their questions if they have any to our speaker. If anyone has any question, Please ask. Participants are requested if any questions, uh, please uh, unmute yourselves and uh, direct question to our speaker. One of the participants already write in our chat box. Thank you for your detailed explanation. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for the speaker, sir? 
so uh, assignment someone is asking assignment link okay yes. from your organization team you can forward the assignment link to them sir another participant is also right the very good session is ah, very informative yeah, yeah. thank you all thank you for your patience but sorry during the interruption uh, due no, to no, 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 the uh, no. lecture i think it, now it has been connected to another network i think it will not be such problem if some drastic network fault is not occurring in this our island anyway Yes. Now over to uh, Shubhan Narekha, madam. Yes. Uh, so I uh, does anyone uh, have any questions? So one one participant I think asked one question, Dr. B. C. Gana. Yes. Uh, yes. Mushara, yes. His question is, uh, CO should, should be mapped. Should be mapped at least one. CO. CO. Is it compulsory? Yes. Obviously, it is compulsory. Otherwise, that CO should not be considered as CO. CO should map at least one PO. Otherwise, we shall not consider that is a CO. That means the writing of CO is not good. Okay, you are right. Okay. If does if anyone I mean if uh, there aren't any questions then we can wrap up our session morning session here. All after sorry sorry for my uh, sorry for an interruption uh, from my end. So we can uh, we can wrap up the morning session here. We will be continuing with uh, Dr. Shurujit Barisar again in our afternoon session. Uh, so see you all there. It will be uh, continue. It it will be continued from uh, two p.m. onwards. So okay. Some uh, Shorota okay. Akarapu sir, he commented that uh, thank you sir. Clear explanation about COPO mapping. Thank you okay, okay. for uh, listening to the lecture. Thank you sir. Uh, we have uh, for our second sessions. Okay, okay, thank you, sir. Second session, okay. I think in the topic of the lecture yes, is. Uh, we can, we can wrap up the session here and uh, continue with yes. the afternoon session that is going to be uh, big. Uh, uh, that, that will be from uh, 2 p.m. onwards. Okay. Yes. Our okay, madam. We will with... start from 2 p.m. Yes. Yes, we can, we can wrap up the session here. Thank you so much, sir, for joining. Okay, 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 I am leaving now. I am again. I will come live on two o'clock. Yes, yes. Thank you. Participants, Thank you. you can leave now. Uh, Rajoshi sir and Tanvi sir are requested to share assignment link in Zoom. Yes. Rajoshi sir and Tanvi sir are requested to give uh, assignment link. Yes, yes. And the we have already link. shared the feedback, uh, feedback form uh, in the group. And now we'll uh, share the uh, assessment form. Yes, yes, sir. Thank yes, you, sir. sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.
ஏன் சப்ஜெக்ட் பண்ணி பிடிக்கிறது இல்லையா மீதி எல்லாத்திலயும் மார்க் வாங்குறியா participants are requested to put themselves on mute for now we will be starting our afternoon session very soon
Raghunath sir, uh, kindly uh, make co-host to Shubhan Norekha, madam. Okay, sir. Okay. Has the speaker joined? Has no. Shurujit sir joined no, yet? No, 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 please wait. Okay.
participants are requested to uh, wait for a bit till our speaker joins. Onubrahma, sir. Hi, Shubhra, madam. Uh, speaker will join a uh, couple of groups. Okay. Okay, okay. okay. Sir will join. Sir, join. Okay, I think the speaker has joined. Shurajit uh, sir has joined, right? Yes. Uh, Raghunath yes. sir, kindly make him co-host. He already is. Yes, yes. Already done, He's sir. already done, Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Raghunath. Raghunath, please start. Yes, yes. Uh, good afternoon to you all. Good afternoon Good afternoon to our speaker. We have already a wonderful lecture in the morning session and we are going to begin the afternoon session with mr uh, dr shurujit bari sir let me introduce him for a bit for the uh, participants who went there in the morning session dr shurujit bari has received be degree in electronics and communication engineering from the university of badwan in the year 2002 he has obtained MTech degree in VLSI design and microelectronics technology from the Jadupur University in the year 2008. He has been awarded PhD degree from the Maulana Abul Kalam Azad University of Technology, West Bengal, formerly known as WBUT, in the year 2020. Currently, he is working as principal at Shagor Mohabidaloy, Shagor Island, West Bengal. In the past, he worked in the level of lecturer assistant professor and associate professor consecutively in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering of Narula Institute of Technology, Kolkata, an autonomous in institute, NBA accredited, NAC accredited with grade A and NIRF ranked under JIS group affiliated to Macau. 
he has around 18 years of teaching experience he was also the coordinator coordinator of the uh, iqac nit since july 2019 to may 2023 his teaching interest revolves around basic electronics engineering, analog electronic circuits, solid state devices, circuit theory, and networks, microelectronics, and VLSI design, audio and video engineering, satellite and optical fiber communication, etc. His research interests are on modeling of nano devices and low power VLSI circuits. He has published papers in reputed international journals and conferences. Dr. Bari has chaired in technical session of uh, some seminars and international conferences. He has delivered speech in FDPs on technical area and OBE. He is the in reviewer of the Journal of Microsystem Technology, Springer, Journal of Nanoparticle, Journal of Electronics, Taylor and Francis. He is a member of professional society IEEE CAS, IEEE EDS, and the Institution of Engineers, India. Dr. Shurujit Bari is currently holding the position of Vice Chair Executive Committee of IEEE Circuit and Systems Society CASS Kolkata section. Uh, sir, you can uh, begin your session. Uh, over to you. Thank you, Madam, for your nice introduction. Uh, uh, in this session, uh, I'd like to uh, explain about the MAC acquisition strategy. First of all, good afternoon, all of you. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So let me do share my screen and then I shall start the lecture. Uh, participants are requested to wait uh, three to five minutes. Uh, our speaker will join within five minutes. Uh, due to network issue, he is uh, actually unable to join at that moment. Within five minutes, he will join again. The speaker will join in five minutes. Please uh, wait. Okay, am I audible? Sir has joined. Am sir I? has joined. Yes, sir, you are audible. You are audible. Okay. So let me to see on the screen first, then I shall start my lecture.
Suraj Baria. Suraj Baria. Is my screen is visible? Yes, sir. Please continue. Oh. Okay, okay. So today's topic in this session, development of uh, acquisition strategies uh, regarding the NAC acquisition. We have the outline of today's presentation, assessment and acquisition, benefits of acquisition, eligibility criteria for NAC acquisition, what are the core values? for NAC acquisition, quality indicator framework, QIF, then key indicators, then matrices, distribution of metrics and key indicators across the criteria, distribution of weightage across key indicators, Assessment and accreditation process, this is revised process. Assessment outcomes, calculation of CGPA, one example I shall show you. Institutional grade and accreditation status, thereafter I shall quickly go through the NAC manual or affiliated institute or college. And benchmark for assessing quantitative matrices, which is very, very essential earlier days. It was not there. Now, this benchmark helps you uh, to prepare for NAC acquisition, I mean, for data collection and submission. Then, SOP, standard operating procedure and data templates. Data collection committee at the institute level. This is strategy for your own college level how we will prepare the data, how we will collect the data, and how we will submit. Uh, Data and document submission at HEI portal, Higher Education Institute portal. If we have some time, then we can visit the NAC website also. Okay, and uh, so these are the topics. So now, start actual contents. So what is assessment and accreditation? So, uh, education yes sir you are you are so education plays a vital role in the development of any nation therefore there is a premium on both quantity and quality of higher education. The NAC has been set up to facilitate the volunteering institution to assess their performance, receive set parameters through introspection and a process that provides space for participation of the institution. Now these are the benefits of NAC acquisition. Institution to know its strengths, weakness, and opportunities through an informed review process. Identification of internal area of planning and resource allocation. Collegiality on the campus. Funding agency look for, funding agencies look for objective data and performance funding. That means whenever you will apply for some funding, at the time, they will check whether your institute or college is accredited or not. If so, then you will get some extra advantages, some scoring advantages, so that you can get the fund very quickly. Uh, then, the institution to initiate innovative and modern methods of pedagogy. Then, new sense of direction. New sense of direction and identity for institution. Moreover, the society look for reliable 
information on quality education offered nac accreditation also helps the employer look for reliable information on the quality of education offered to the prospective recruiters and then obviously intra and inter institutional interaction now these are the eligibility criteria all these are taken from nac website it is not uh, taken from other resources so what are the eligibility criteria higher education institution with a record of at least two batches of student graduated or been in exercise existence for 6 years which ever is earlier are eligible to apply for the process of assessment and accreditation of nac and fulfill other condition or are covered by other provision which are clearly mentioned in the nac website for that you are suggested to for more details you are suggested to visit the nac website sir your voice is not audible sir yes yes sir i am coming okay 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 So these are the eligibility criteria. Whenever one college or institute will go for NAC accreditation, now these are the core values based on which NAC supposed to accredit one institute. What are the different core values? First one, contribution, contributing to the national development. Second is fostering global competencies among student. I mean, students should not be only confined with the, this idea. Uh, they should have some competencies to work in global scenario or gro global market third one is the inculcating a value system among student so student have skill or some domain knowledge in addition they should have some values that means they can uh, they can associate with other community uh, in the india and also the universe so these are related to values and obviously the fourth one related to ict based teaching and learning that is promotion promoting the use of technology and finally nac is also looking for excellence quest for excellence center of excellence these are the core values and based on that nac has so far as per existing framework they have prepared seven criteria for engineering and some other general programs but for medical the number of criteria is different so as uh, most of the faculty members are here from medical uh, from the engineering and the general course background so i am only concentrated about these seven criteria So that means whenever one institute will be assessed, they need to uh, give the answer, or they need to prepare the data context to these seven criteria. So what are the criteria? Criteria one: curricular aspects. Criteria two: teaching, learning, and evaluation. Criteria three: research, innovation, and extension. Criteria four: infrastructure and learning resources. Criteria five: student support and progression. criteria 6 governance leadership and management and finally institutional values and best practices now under each criteria a few key indicators are identified which are available as kis these key indicators are further delineated as matrices there are two different types of matrix 
नंबर वन क्वांटिटेटिव मैट्रिक्स एंड नंबर टू क्वालिटेटिव मैट्रिक्स क्वांटिटेटिव मैट्रिक्स आर यूजुअली डिनोटेड बाय क्यू एन एम सो आई एम राइटिंग आई एम यूजिंग माय पेन जस्ट सी दिस इज Q N M quantitative matrix and it is qualitative matrix Q L M. Actually, the answer related to these matrices are reviewed by the DBB partner. Data verification and validation, and it is done at the remote place, not at the institute premises. and the quality matrix are usually answer of quality matrix are usually assessed by pr team after clearing of dvb the pr team will come to the institute and they will assess the answer related to this qlm so qlm it is related to some data data means quantitative data that means they will uh, supply you some excel sheet and in that excel sheet in that specified format you need to place your data numeric data and based on that the quantitative matrix will be assessed over qlm it is descriptive that means you need to write some words it is around within 500 words in some cases it is 200 words and it will be assessed at the institute premises by the pr team and with some supporting documents so this is very very essential because those who are in the committee of nac they need to know what is the uh, how the data will be presented through qnm and through qlm i will come later in details about all this qnm and qlm i shall show you also the format but at least uh, you, you should keep in mind that qnm will be assessed by dbb data verification and validation during the process and it will not be verified at uh, the institute level it will be verified at the nac end and the remote remote place means not you need to submit the data and it will be verified and for affiliated institute usually 68% 60 out of 100 68% uh, i am little bit wrong 62% 62% it will be verified by this dbb and through this qnm and 38% that will be verified by the pr team or through the qlm okay but for autonomous institute it is little bit different uh, it is usually 70% and 30% but i am suggesting if some of you are from autonomous institute or university then you are suggested that go through the present notification in the nac website because it will it will change from time to time presently for appellating institute is 62% through dbb and 38% through pr team now these are the curricular aspects matrix you see uh, this 1.1 this star u u for university and autonomous so this is not required for appellated college curriculum design and development because there is no control for curriculum design and development for the affiliated institute however the affiliated institute can uh, plan their curriculum and they can design their instruction lesson plan i mean they can plan how the course will be delivered that is they can implement then 1.2 is flexibility curriculum enrichment and feedback system what is the total wastage for this curricular aspect and coming later this is for criteria 1 second criteria that is teaching learning and evaluation so you see first is student enrollment and profile that means what is your intake and based on the intake what is how many number of student enrolled in the particular uh, program and this is student teacher ratio teaching learning process teacher profile and quality evaluation process and reforms student performance and learning outcome all details are there so i know i shall show you the manual at the time you are able to understand because within this period it is not possible to discuss in details uh, but at least i can give you some idea how the uh, nac admission 
for a particular institute is going on, what are the activity we need to carry out. And then in the student satisfaction survey, the third is, like idea three is research innovation extension. This first one is not, uh, first one is not uh, complied to the affiliated institute promotion for research and facilities. Mm -hmm. From second, 3.2 to rest. Yeah. Yeah. Not applicable for affiliated college. For affiliated college, applicable are resource mobilization and research, innovation ecosystem, research publication and awards, extension activities, and collaboration. Criteria four, physical facilities, learning, library as a learning resources, IT infrastructure, maintenance of campus infrastructure. So this is under criteria four, infrastructure and learning resources. And then criteria five is student support and progression. Under this criteria, these are the sub criteria that is student support, student progression, student participation and activities and alumni engagement. Criteria six related to governance, leadership and management, where we need to give the answer for institutional vision and leadership, strategic development and de deployment, faculty empowerment strategies, financial management and resource mobilization, and finally internal quality assurance system, it is under the IQAC, internal quality, internal assurance quality, IQAC, IQAC internal quality assurance cell. And the criteria seven, it is institutional values and best practices. So there, we need to collect the data, we need to submit, regarding the institutional values and social responsibilities, best practices and institutional distinctiveness. Okay. So now I'm moving into the next slide. In the next slide, is the distribution of matrices and key indicators across the criteria and it is for affiliated college only, not for autonomous or university or PG college. So what are the criteria, number of criteria, number of criteria is 7, key indicators 32, qualitative matrices 22 and quantitative matrices 34. So if you add this 22 and 34, then you need to give the answer for 56 matrices. Okay, 56 metric. So this 22 matrix will be verified or the answer of this matrix will be verified by the peer team and for 34, the matrix will be verified by the DVB partner or during DVB. Now you see the distribution of across the matrix. First we may consider the curricular criteria of one, curricular aspect, it is, it is hunted. And these are the key indicators. As already I mentioned, now here OIT is given for curriculum planning and implementation it is 20, academic flexibility 30, curriculum management 30, feedback system 20. So if you add up sum up, then we get total 100. Teaching learning, for teaching learning you see marks is little bit higher for affiliated institute. This total is, this is weightage, it is 350 and these are the OIT is distributed to different key indicators for student enrollment and profile 40, student teacher ratio 40, teaching learning process 40, teacher profile quality 40, evaluation process 40, student performance and learning outcome 90, and student satisfaction survey 60. Actually, student satisfaction survey. Sir, you're not audible. Sorry, I was disconnected from the network. So, as I told you, 
that this student satisfaction survey it will be conducted by nac itself after submission of the ssr so for that you need to submit the student details with their mobile number email id their level of uh, studying in the institute specified format is there but uh, from this year in the month of april uh, for the transparency uh, they are uh, they uh, they have mentioned the otp based feedback otp based survey that means the student mobile number is very very essential so whenever student will uh, put their feedback uh, on the call some questionnaires are there on the institute at the time they some otp will come and getting that otp they will to give the feedback over there so unique mobile number for the students is essential whenever you will be submitting the data student database to them next is criteria 3 the total marks is 110 for university and autonomous institute this marks is little bit higher i am not comparing but i am mainly focus on the accredited institute as uh, uh, you are uh, many of you are from accredited institute if you are from autonomous institute the criteria name number of category is same only marks distribution is little bit different the total is always 1000 considering seven criteria So research mobilization and research is 10, innovation ecosystem 15, research publication awards 25, extension activities 40. So this extension activity uh, actually in details in manual is there. It is related to NSS activity, uh, some NCC activity, something like that. Collaboration means collaboration, research collaboration or uh, student exchange, faculty exchange or collaboration with other institute. Uh, these are related to this. Team degree 3.5. Criteria four is mainly related to infrastructure and learning resources. It is possible to college and total weightage is allotted to 100. Physical facilities 30 marks, 30 weightage. Library and learning resources 20. Infrastructure 30. Maintenance of campus infrastructure 20. Criteria five total is 140. Student support 50. Student progression 35. Student participation and activities 45. Alumni engagement 10. It is related to governance, leadership, and management. Institutional vision and leadership, 15. Strategic development and deployment. That means for institute, you should have some five years plan, each year plan and five years plan. What should be the strategic and its deployment for the development of the institute? So that five years plan uh, is required. Based on that, they will assess the uh, institute for this particular key indicators. Faculty empowerment strategy. Faculty empowerment strategy is whether there is some facilities for faculties. For example, whether you are availing some leaves or not, study leave, medical leave, maternity leave, or any kinds of CM, uh, email, any kinds of leaves are there, or any other facilities. For example, say convent facility, ATM facility, bank facility, or any others are there. So these are related to faculty empowerment strategies. Or you are attending some conference or seminar, whether you are getting some uh, funding from the college or not. Say you are uh, registering for some professional societies, IIT, IIT, whether you are getting that registration fees or not. So all these are related to that. Basic details are there in manual. Uh, last time I show you at least uh, some details from the manuals. And then the internal quality assurance sales, whether you are participating in NIRA. or some accreditation or you have some uh, academic and administrative audit for year whether it is held or not uh, these are related to internal quality assurance system and based on the recommendation of the audit team uh, you need to take the actions uh, for the institute for its further development and this is criteria 7 uh, uh, it is 100 institutional values and social responsibilities whether you are your students are involved for uh, social responsibility or institute involved some social responsibilities or it has some values or not that means it is uh, some commemorative day we, we need to observe so we are related to this 7.1 best practice various practices are there among various practices which one are the best practice for the institute and this best practice is very really 
helpful for a institute for the development in the field of academic, administrative, finance, and others. And then institutional distinctiveness. They are, all, they are also asking that you write some words in which area the institute is distinct compared to the other institute or other college. So if you consider, if you add all these marks, 100, 100, 140, 100, 110, 350, and 100, you will get total 1,000 weightage. And again, if you consider the marks, then as each criteria is assessed, so the assessed is done in a scale of 4. So therefore, total marks, total weightage is 1,000, and total marks is 1,000 into 4, that is 4,000. I shall show you an example shortly at the time very much clear to you. So moving on to the next part, that is the process of NAC accreditation. It is one general slide where everything is incorporated over here, but for each activity, separate slides are there. All these slides are taken from the NAC website. Uh, this is acknowledgement because I cannot deviate their policy from, uh, from their policy to in my policy. I always have to consider their policy and their process. So what is the first thing? Those who are applying for the first cycle, first and foremost thing is the HEI registration in their portal. Because whatever the data you will be submitting all through online, no hard copy data will be accepted. Since 2017, earlier uh, hard, copy, uh, hard copy was accepted nowadays from 2017, new uh, academic assessment process new academic assessment process, now it has been changed. Okay, so everything need to be uh, sent to the online. So first thing is the IT registration with your details. In the NAC website, you need to register yourself. Once it has been registered, if you have some plan for NAC accreditation, then it is suggested that you should uh, get the data for last five years. For example, if your current year is 22-23, then considering 22-23, you collect the data from different units for the last five years, that is 22-23, 21-22, 20-21, and 18-19. All these five years data is required. Whenever it will be assessed, five years data is required. If you is prepared, then it is suggested you should apply for NAC. First page is registration and then IIQA submission. What is IIQA? Some format is there. Again, it has to be submitted through online. But hard copy format is there. Based on that, you can collect the data. It is one or two pages format. So basic information we need to uh, place in that format. That is institutional information for quality assessment. This is the first page. And during that time, you need to uh, give the page also. For page, you should visit the NAC website because it is time to time it will vary. You should uh, check it. Currently, I think as I recall, it is 25,000 plus GST. Or if it is another, you just suggested to go through that. Uh, automatically, it will be displayed in your portal and that exact amount you need to submit. So once IQ, IIQ will be submitted, the NAC personality uh, or uh, from NAC end, they will verify your IIQA. If IIQA is approved, then they will suggest they will open the online format for the SSR. And there they will give you 45 days time. Within 45, after the uh, approval of this IIQA, you will get only 45 days to submit the SSR. So that's why my suggestion before submission of the IIQA, you should collect all the data corresponds to this SSR in a hard copy. Permit is there, permit is already uploaded in the NAC website for accrediting institute or other autonomous university also there. Uh, coming from medical background, medical institute, they are also there. But as you are accredited, so you should use a particular format and you should collect the data accordingly. And then you submit the IIQA because you have only 45 days time to submit the data in the NAC portal. Once you will submit the ECSR, the SSR will be ready for the evaluation. And 
once it will be submitted you will get the acknowledgement in the register email id and uh, the ipc coordinator will be responsible for this uh, they should uh, he should he, he should he or she should visit the nac website regularly through your login and password in the nac hci portal because sometimes they will also uh, give the message through that hci portal so it is my suggestion those you are going for nac accreditation every day at least one or two times you should log in in the nac portal i mean nac portal means you know, hci portal and also the visit the nac website regularly so once you submit the ssr then two process will uh, start simultaneously one is dbb verification dbb data verification and validation and another is the student satisfaction survey so this two process will continue simultaneously and to complete this process around one month is required it is uh, the time frame is up to the nac end they may take one month or little bit higher or lower okay so quantity matrix will be verified there to do the process as i told you told you two types of matrix are there one is the quantity matrix and another is the qualitative matrix qualitative matrix qlm will not be verified Uh, through dbb only quantitative matrix where you need to place the data with the help of some specified format of excel sheet that will be verified by the dbb partner okay so that is the process after dbb uh, for the first page if they have some clarification they will send you clarification in your register mail and also in the dci portal and within 15 days you need to clarify all of their queries for example say you are presenting that you have total number of faculty is 100 but they have some doubts that total number of faculty will not be 100 it will be larger or maybe lower so then they will raise some queries from there that you for to support this you should send some appointment letter of the faculty member something like that they may ask on the total budget for that you need to submit some audited statement of the budget they may ask some student database something like that as per their requirement you need to place your queries signed by hoi head of the institute all the data must be submit submitted with authenticated by the hoi otherwise they will not accept the uh, information except the excel sheet excel sheet should not be sign because excel sheet exactly should be uploaded in the form of soft copy other data it need to be uploaded uh, by signing the hoi okay so within one month they will give the report of dbb if your dbb is will pass now the your institute dbb and simultaneously your student satisfaction survey both will pass then they will Uh, they will ask you the date for peer team visit okay that means from your end you need to keep the date for the visit and simultaneously <coughs> you need to make some payment 50% payment whenever you will submitting this is is at the time 50% payment need to be done and after passing of dbb and student satisfaction survey uh, once they will say that your a dbb has been pre qualified or ssr pre qualified then again you need to pay the rest 50% and then you need to set the date for peer team visit but after qualification of pre qualification of the ssr as per present uh, as per present uh, remarks in the manual uh, the visit has to be completed within 3 months <coughs> that means within you need to fix the date accordingly other is today your dbb has passed and you are giving the date 6 months later uh, it will not be accepted within 3 months we need actually complete it okay so you are giving the date and uh, the payment and then they will fix the peer team peer team usually 2 to 3 peer team will be sent based on the complexity of your institute and number of departments they will come to your institute and before the date of the 3 days before two or 3 days before they will disclose the name and their affiliation of the peer team not before that 
Okay, so now uh, your PR team will visit your institute and they will assess the QLM polyhedral matrix. They will visit around the institute. They will see the infrastructure. Uh, they will interact with the student. They will interact with other stakeholder, faculty, alumni, uh, management. Uh, they will check the. They will see the hostel. Some, I mean, facilities, library facilities, hostel facilities, if any other facilities in your institute. They will check everything else. And finally, they will write the report. And after writing report, uh, there is some format of writing report. Uh, first of all, they will write report for each criteria. Criteria one, where QLM is there. Criteria one, two, criteria seven. And before uploading their remarks to the NAC website, they will uh, meet with the IPC coordinator and the principal, not with others. So they will negotiate whether whatever they have written is okay or not. If you accept yourself, uh, if you agree that their remarks is okay, then they will upload the data with their marks. Marks will not be disclosed to you with their marks, and uh, uh, it will be uploaded in the NAC website. And within seven days after your team visit, within seven days you will get the results, overall results of NAC accreditation. Okay, so after NAC accreditation, then usual process. You need to uh, you need to submit the EQR annual quality assurance report. It is mandate for NAC accredited institute, not before that. That is different thing. Uh, but if you are the if you are applying for the first cycle, then all these steps you need to follow. And context to this general uh, assessment and accreditation process, some details are there. Is how accreditation is going on. Some video is there, so you can go through all this video. Some noise is coming. Anybody can mute yourself. Noise is coming here. Anyway, participants are requested to please mute yourself. So this is HA registration process. All details are required. You can go through this process slide is already there in NAC website. And the next step is. IIP submission, say already I explained IIP submission. Next step is SSR submission process, it is also discussed. And next step is the DBB process. So, DBB process also discussed. These are more uh, details and it has elaborated. And student satisfaction survey, as I mentioned, the student satisfaction survey and the DBB will, uh, DBB, these two events or two activities will continue simultaneously. And it is suggested uh, that you should place 100 percent student in your institute, but for the survey purpose, they will consider only 10 percent student randomly. Which students will be selected? It will not be informed to you. 10 percent student, or total 100 or 500, it is for college and university respectively. So that is up to NAC. We don't have any control on that for student satisfaction survey, but it is very mandatory if one institute disqualify in student satisfaction survey, the other process will not continue, other process will be stopped. So, first, if, if the institute will qualify in student satisfaction survey, then they will go for the other step. If we will start, but if student satisfaction survey will not help, then they will not give the pre qualification through DBB. Okay, so, so it is suggested that this part is very, very mandatory for each of the college or institute. And this is one incriminate biometric data feeding system. This is also carried out in online system. For this purpose, actually, uh, they will extract the data related to your institutional publication from incriminate. So that's why my suggestion that all the faculty members, uh, the students whose papers, journal papers mainly, their appellation is, uh, their, their appellation is your college. And you should, um, you should upload all these papers in the Vidhan portals so that they can access it. Otherwise, if you use the marks. Okay, if not uploaded, if it is online journal, it's fine. But if it is offline journal, then it is suggested you should upload in Vidhan portal so that they can extract the data. And they will consider 
for this purpose they will consider only ugc care journals no other journal will be accepted and it is already been already been notified in nac website if it is not a ugc care journal then uh, the marks will not be considered okay so it is my suggestion that whenever you will go for any publication then you publish in ugc care journal okay now this part is already told you that is basically for pre qualification and if you uh, secure 25% of total weightage total weightage through this dbb process then your institute is pre qualified for the next step that means for prt otherwise your institute will be disqualified or terminated from this uh, accreditation process and again you need to reapply starting from iiqb so pre qualification is very very essential okay so now uh, i shall discuss about the assessment outcome so how the permanent uh, final results will uh, accumulated uh, through this nac assessment process actually there are three parts number one peer team report so they are the parts of the peer team report the general information they are qualitative indicators staying to weakness opportunity challenges recommendation for quality and these are their report and for uh, appellating institute it is 38% marks is allotted or what is uh, what is allotted to the to us the peer team so this marks is not so less so as per my perception you need to grab the marks from this peer team 38% and rest the 62 that will be verified by dbb as already mentioned graphical data representation it is based on the quantitative matrix it is done by the dbb partners by observing the uh, net personalities and the third part is the institutional gate sheet based on this data they will generate the institutional gate sheet and your accreditation result will be displayed so see this is one example how the criteria uh, grade point average is calculated for example as i told you that for appellating institute total weightage is 100 and these are the weightage for the particular criteria say 1.1 20 15 and so on and so forth total is 100 now what is the maximum marks as told you that is, this is weighted but marks is given uh, total marks is 80 why because whenever they will award some value for a particular marks they will give the award from 0 to 4 0 1 2 3 4 okay 0 1 2 3 4 4 so either they may give the 0 0 means your score will be 0 1 means you will get how much that is 20 marks you will get and what is the maximum marks maximum in marks is 80 what is is 20 it will be multiplied by 4 so maximum marks full marks is 80 and if your grade is within this either 0 to 3 0 to 4 then if you score four then you maximum you will earn 80 on the other end for this criteria if it is 3 then total marks is 45 3 into 15 45 2 15 into 20 that is 30 accordingly and this will be calculated this will be sum up so total is 3 25 so what is the total maximum marks 400 out of 400 your score is 325 Now, what is the criteria gate point average? Criteria gate point average is 325 divided by 100. It is 3.25. It is for criteria one. Similarly, for all other criteria, this criteria gate point average is calculated. Consider uh, it has been done, and this is the overall scenario for one institute. These data are arbitrary. I have just taken this data for an example. You see. From the criteria one, you see the weightage is 100, maximum full marks is 400, and criteria one is gate point 325. It has been actually copied from the previous slide for criteria one. So, what is the criteria gate point average? 3.25. Similarly, for that particular institute, you may consider this is 350 total maximum marks. This is into four. So, your score is 1100. And if you calculate accordingly with the help of that formula, it will be 3.14. Similarly, for other criteria, you see the data is represented. So if you add all these, then total is thousand weightage. Maximum full marks is 
400 and what is criteria grid point you sum up all these if you sum up then you will get this 3 to 7 4 if the calculation is not wrong if you add all this you will get 3 to 7 4 okay then what is your overall score overall grade overall uh, overall grade means in terms of this mark out of 4 that is this 3 to 7 4 divided by 1000 3 to 7 4 divided by 1000 that means 3.27 it is not average of all this if you get it average then it will be different but the policy is that here you need to sum up this is sum up divided by 1000 if you do so then you will get 3.27 it is your uh, marks in scale of 4 in the next slide it has been mentioned the calculation that institutional cgpa cumulative that is cumulative gate point average that is criteria 1 to 7 criteria wise gate point divided by total weightage 1000 in denominator and in numerator it is 3270 so ultimately you are getting 3.27 then what is your grade in terms of litter litter grade it is a plus and there is one table you see that if the range of institutional cumulative grade is in this range you will get the different grade for example if it is less than 1.5 it is not accredited if it is 1.5 1 to 2 it is accredited with litter grade c it is 2.01 to 2.5 b 3.26 to 3.50 a plus and 3.51 to 4 it is a plus plus a double plus this is the maximum grade so far as already notified by the NAC accreditation NAC. Now uh, I shall show you very quickly the NAC manual for accredited quality. It is available in the website, but still for your convenience, I'd like to show you the manual for uh, for accredited college. Please do it. Is the video file is visible? Yes, sir, it's visible. Okay. So this is the manual. You can download this from the website. You just see everything is written over here. Actually, in my lecture, many things are taken from here, and it helps you for NAC edition. If you go through the manual very properly, then I think you will get very good score in NAC. So see, in addition to the criteria, some general information you need to place in online, not in hard copy, but this hard copy, this hard copy manual will help you get the uh, data. So, things are over there, I am directly going to the criteria. You see many things are there, some general information into place and currently they are also asking some answer uh, regarding the NEP. Okay, NEP related answer you need to place, although the, it is not graded, no marks is given over there, but you need to give the answer. That is preparedness for NEP, National Education Policy 2020. To see, all details are there. For example, you see, this is criteria 1, curricular aspects 100. And key indicators is 1.1. Under 1.1, you see there is only one metric. These are the metric. And the metric number is 1.1.1. And which kind of metric it is? It is QLM. You see, qualitative metrics. QLM means L for qualitative. QLM. So QLM means no excessive need to be placed. Here you need to give some write up. So that's why you see what is the question? The question is that the institution ensures effective curriculum planning and delivery through a well planned and documented process including academic calendar and conduct of continuous internal assessment so you need to write down the answer for this question within 500 hours 500 words and this qlm will be verified by the pr team whenever they will visit to your institute so here you need to place the write up in, in the online what is the necessary file they are asking for upload on supporting as a supporting you need to upload some data upload additional information so it is not mentioned which data you need to be uploaded but whatever you will write and if you see that these are the supporting data you need to upload in that particular matrix 
in online for example say here they are asking the academic calendar so you have academic calendar so you can upload the academic calendar signing by h authenticated by the hy you can um, uh, place say continuous internal assessment what are the different assessment policy in your institute few of them few documents you can place over here but it will be uh, it will be uh, verified at your institute premises not online but you need to place the data through online okay not all as a something now now consider the 1.2 in 1.2 you see this is the type of matrix is q and n quantitative matrix so what they are asking number of add ons or certificate evaluated programs offered and online moocs program like swam nptel etc where the students of the institution have benefited during the last 5 years so you need the total 5 years data so here separate excel sheet is there so in that excel series that's why they have mentioned the template so in that template you need to place the data okay and this will be verified at the nac end through dbb process this is 1.2 similarly for other criteria some other matrix is there some matrix is are qlm and some matrix is are qlm and if you uh, make it average again i am saying that around 68% uh, sorry 38% on an average is for qlm and 62 for qnm okay so these are the manual many things are mentioned over here if you go through the manual very properly then i think you don't have any uh, there is no problem for understanding still you have some understanding you can go through the nac video in website or you can participate some program organized by the nac itself anyway so now i am moving to the next part as per my ppt the next part is benchmark for assessing qlm so this is very very important i will now share the please wait so now i am sharing the benchmark actually in my institute whenever uh, in my past institute at narola sir technology i was the ipc coordinator uh, and uh, during that time i am talking about 2022 and during that time we could not find out any benchmark uh, but nowadays nac has published the benchmark it is available in the website for autonomous institute for appellating institute uh, for university separately and i must suggest you to go through the benchmark which helps you to collect the data and to present the data on the nac website what is benchmark this benchmark is only for the quantitative matrix not for the qualitative matrix because based on that your marks will be awarded to the dbb partner okay so now i am sharing this benchmark is the pdf file is visible yes sir it's visible okay so see this is very uh, essential whenever we will be submitting preparing the data or collecting the data for nac accreditation they have jot down all the quantitative matrix over here from different criteria for example just uh, few minutes before i told you that number of add ons or certificate or validated program offered and online moocs program like swam npt etc okay so this is related to 1.1 and it is the type of the matrix is qnm you see the award is 0 to 4 that means either they will give marks to 0 or they will give 1 or they will 2 or 3 or 4 but they have some benchmark what is the benchmark it is now transparent go to the institute and go to the dbb and also the nac if it is greater than 25 what is the question number not percentage here they are asking the number number of add on program that we considering total 5 years if number of this type of programs is greater than 25 the full marks will be given that is it will be given the four on the other hand if it is in between 20 15 and 
if it is if it is between 15 and 25 then you will be awarded 3 if it is 5 to 15 this is 2 and 1 to 5 that is 500 zero, zero. similarly you see the percentage of student enrolled in certificate so here they are asking number of program and here they are asking that number of percentage of student so if 50 percent of student enrolled then you will be awarded 4 otherwise you see if it is less than 10 percent then 0 so this benchmark helps you to collect the data and to submit the data in the NAC portal and you can assess yourself how much marks you will obtain and whether your institute will be, will be able to pass this DBB or not because major weightage is given to the DBB that is 62% uh, so if you qualify in DBB uh, so so uh, most of the part uh, I can say you can guess that your institute is going to be accredited but still you need to wait for the uh, peer team digit. So see for another example consider it is little bit different compared to other for example this one say 5.12 in 5.12 what is the question capability capacity building and skill enhancement initiative taken by the institute son in include the following so your this is student support system I already told you during the key quantity uh, I mean key indicator factors at the time at 5.1 you see this is on question capacity buildings and skill enhancement indicative taken by the institution your institute is offering student which one only soft skill language and communication skill only life skill yoga physical fitness health hygiene or ict and computing skill if your institute will offer this all four then you will get the a that means here you will get the four out of four if your institute will offer only three then you will get b b means three if you your institute will get only two then you get c only one then d if nothing is offered then you will get zero okay so either in number in terms of number or in terms of percentage or in terms of the specialty offering for example you see for uh, 6.22 so implementation of e-governance in the area of operation you know currently most of the engineering institute uh, has opted all this uh, area for their uh, e-governance number one administration administration means say your uh, requisition of any uh, any what should i say any software or any materials through erp that is one kind of administration attendance monitoring that is also under the administration say appraisal this is also one kind of administration finance and accounts everything is done through finance say check approval uh, check payment everything is done through finance and account student admission sub admission and support whenever students are taking admission they are paying fees through the online portal or semester fees they are paying the online fees through the portal and also examination this is related to the online examination some institute may opt may not opt this examination but for affiliated institute as a semester in examination is conducted by the university you can show the internal assessment uh, through uh, e-governance portal say you can say say we are setting the question paper through the portal we are placing the copo or we can tag the co through the question paper through the online software so you can you, you can claim it okay so if you uh, claim all these posts if your institute have then you will get the a that means four if three then uh, b i mean any three c means any two and one means any one and nothing is zero okay so all these are the benchmarks which helps you to collect and prepare and submit the data sometimes it is found the institute has all the data but due to lack of collection or lack of awareness institute are unable to submit all these data so my suggestion whenever you'll be collecting the data you must be careful about that and one committee will say that will show the last part of this my lecture Committee need to be framed in institution level that coming later. Okay, so these are related to institutional benchmark, which was already been published at NAC website, and I am showing exactly that video file to you, so you can download it 
as per your level of institution whether it is affiliated institute or uh, autonomous institute or it is in university now the next part of my lecture i am just i'd like to show you uh, that data collection committee before that i want to show you some sop standard operating procedure this is very very essential so let me please wait i am sharing sop standard operating procedure it is also published by nac for each level of college autonomous affiliated university this sop is for affiliated college i am suggesting uh, those who will be going for the nac accreditation you should go through all the all the stintings on the lines uh, so that uh, you can uh, write the answer uh, as per their requirement otherwise you will lose the marks for example uh, if your data is higher than the 5 mb then you need to present the data to link representation you need to create the data you need to create the link for all this data you will get the link and that link should be your college website no other link will be accepted if you uh, put the google drive link that google drive link will not be accepted it's the link should be uh, generated by the college website and you can talk with your admin uh, regarding this purpose website admin and if you supply the data and they will prepare the link and automatically it will be uploaded and then link will be presented in the nac website in a particular criteria for particular uh, for a particular matrix okay so it is only uh, required only when your data is greater than 5 mb less than 5 mb directly you can upload the data okay this sop is mainly for quantity matrix these are the sop where it will be accepted see this columns are there matrix number 1.1 actually uh, in the matrix one is the institutional part is there so in institutional part uh, these are the matrix 1.1 okay this is for extended profile so although no grade will be awarded but it is for extended profile so whenever you will be uh, place the data regarding this extended Uh, matrix extended profile at the time you must be careful that which one will be accepted and which one not be accepted the matrix details for example the number of students year wise during the last 5 years so what they are asking document required for verification provide appropriate link to the admission portal admission approval documents received from the university for assessment pure and second they are asking year wise list of student approved by the affiliating university for example this year for cse program we have total number of student admitted is 120 so that list should be approved by the university and that data has to be uploaded to the website and here what they are asking specific instruction to hi include the total number of student on rolls across the program consider first second and third year of batch of program for all the assessment period of years so all the data need to submit they, they are asking and here they are asking you should place the data for odd semester only whenever you are considering the number of student at the time you should place for odd semester because usually student will take the admission in odd semester so that's why odd semester data is essential however whenever they will be asking for student outcome that is results at the time you need to consider the given semester data because it is not guaranteed that the student who are taking admission all of will appear for the admission or all will qualify in the semester examination okay so all these are the standard operating procedure you should go through all these sop so that you can present the data properly again i am uh, showing the uh, one sop for 1.2.1 that is number of add ons program as i have already given that example so number of add ons program 
so what is the what are the document needed details of each program such as name of the program duration list of student enrolled with signature of student say you have prepared the data or you have given the data uh, without with program duration and program name but student attendance is not is missing you have student attendance but it is missing so they will not consider then model certificate after completion of the program usually you award some certificate to the student so that certificate model certificate some sample certificate not all certificate some sample certificate need to be uploaded uh, the curriculum of that particular program assessment procedure some assessment procedure means how you are assessing that program uh, how you are assessing that particular validated course here is that you need to present specific instruction to hei what they are asking add on certificate validated program non credit to the non credit course of minimum 30 hour duration say you have conducted one program which is 10 hour duration not accept will not be accepted at least 30 hours later on dbb may ask for certificate of randomly selected students say you have presented 100 students out of 100 students they can pick up randomly one or two students and they may ask the certificate for that particular student so you must be ready uh, with all the students so you need to collect all the students as a sample you need to upload over here but the, if the dbb partner will ask during dbb you need to place that particular certificates all five years data need to be presented the certificate value program every year during assessment period to be counted only one for example say this year you have conducted say validated program on iot next year you are also conducting same program will not be accepted as per their issue but earlier it was not there that's why i am suggesting every time you should you, you should uh, you should visit the website so what are the changes made by nag you should consider and do accordingly okay now what should not be considered you see up to this it will be considered as per their guideline but not to be included or considered avoid programs conducted under regular university curriculum for example say you are teaching introduction to c and you are arranging one validated course on introduction to c it will not be accepted even if iot is in your curriculum it will not be accepted so the name of the program should be different from the am i audible yes ma'am okay tahole to uh, okay participants are requested to wait i think sir will join okay, soon i was disconnected yes, yes. when i have connected please please wait i'm sharing sir you are audible am i audible yes sir yes okay. sir you are audible please wait i'm sharing i'm sharing please wait yeah I think it is visible now. Uh, yeah, it is visible. Yes, sir, it is visible. Okay, so see about the program as I already explained, and also second point you see, avoid considering certificate add-on validated program of less than thirty words. It was already mentioned in this column. So if it is less than thirty words, it will not be accepted. In addition, I am I am from my experience. I am also sharing with you. Whenever you will prepare the brochure of this value, you should prepare the brochure, course content, and you should mention uh, uh, what is the objective and the outcome from each of the valued course. Then it will be complete for that program. Okay. So similarly for other quantity metrics, throughout the criteria, uh, all all criteria these are mentioned. So I am suggesting to go through all these SOP. Uh, during submitting the data context to the quantitative matrix now moving into the my data that is uh, some sample format of sample format of data template 
Please do it. I'm sharing the data template. I've shared some Excel sheets. Is visible? Uh, no, sir. Is it, is it visible? No, sir. No, sir. Till now, it not. Okay, okay. It is showing your your screen share is loading. Okay, please wait. It is it is coming. Once you are able to see, then you should inform me. Now yes, it is visible, now sir. Now it is visible. Okay. So see, this is the this is the Excel sheet. Uh, it is already uploaded in the NAC website, but you need to fill the Excel sheet, which will be tagged in your HI portal, not this. But you can fill the data in this Excel sheet as a prerequisite, so that you can collect the data accordingly. So see, all the Excel sheet context to the q &A is presented over here. For example, you see, this is 1.1, this is number of student year-wise during the last five years, this is year, name, student enrollment number, date of enrollment. And if I move on to say 1.1 graduated program, you see what they are asking, name of the add-on certificate or validated course, they need to place the name, then course code, if you have any course code, then you can mention, otherwise you can keep blank. So my suggestion, you can mention some course code. For example, IoT, you can keep some code over there. That is up to your level. It is not university code, it is code generated by your department or by program or by institute. Year of offering in which year you have offered. They have also made term, this is for year one, year two, so on and so forth. Year one, year two means uh, actually you just move uh, from uh, descending mode. Year one means is it 20 to 23. If currently you would like to submit the data, year two is the next preceding year, then uh, so on and so forth. You need to place all this data and uh, what they are asking number of times offered during the year. In a particular year, you can offer. For example, say IoT is very demandful. Now, if number of students in a particular batch is more, you can offer the course uh, two times or three times in a year. But that same course should not be repeated in the next year. If repeated, then only counted. It should be counted only once. Duration of the course. Duration of course means here it may be one week, maybe two weeks, but total of thirty hours. It should be thirty hours. So it is better you write down your hours instead of week. My suggestion is write down the number of people in the year. In, the, uh, in this particular program or course. And number of students completed completing the course in the year. It is not guaranteed the student who enrolled for this particular uh, course, validated program or validated course, all are successfully completed. Because you are offering certificate, you are successfully completed, then you should have the number here, this number and this number will be same. Okay, and this total count, total count should be 25 to get the get the maximum marks as already mentioned, considering all five years. Okay. So these are the example of Excel sheets. Some other Excel sheets are also there. For example, say person of student undertaking project work or field work or internship program name have all programs should be there in your institute all engineering program uh, uh, program name program code uh, list of student undertaking project and link to the relevant document link to the relevant document means say they are working in a field field based work field visit so you should give some snapshot for that particular program if the size is higher than the five mb then you should create one link and that link should be pasted over here. Even as they are asking the link over here, even if the uh, size of the particular document is less than 5 MB, it is suggested you should place the link because they are asking the link to present over here. So you should place the link. Okay, similarly, to all these Excel sheets over there, you can download it from Mac website and you can prepare yourself, you can collect the data and after HI registration, I submit the IIQA and then submit the PCR uh, at 
put it to their online format. You cannot upload this format. The same format is available over there. I must suggest for a particular content, for particular criteria, or particular metrics, you download the exception from there. Okay, it is more or less same, but if there is some different during your presentation or your submission, so that's why I am suggesting these are the references. Okay, you should not exactly upload this file. You should upload the file which will be available in your HI portal. Okay, and in each HI matrix, you should upload only one Excel, not two Excel sheet. And do not, um, again, my suggestion do not change the format. Whatever the format they have presented, exactly that format has to be used during presenting the data through this Excel sheet for QA. Okay. So now I am almost I have all things I have all the things I have shared now I am sharing the PPT once again. So the next part is that is data collection committee at the college or institute level. So here it is my suggestion that for NAC accreditation activity it is not possible by only one person, it is not possible by the IPC coordinator, not possible by the principal, not possible by one faculty member, it is not possible or not by one committee. So I must suggest that you can prepare the committee for each criteria. Total seven committee may be, uh, may be prepared, prepared and in each committee consisting of the faculty members, some member from different departments, so that you can collect the data from different units, different department. And overall uh, coordination will be done by the IPC coordinator or in your level if there is NAC coordinator, but, uh, but whenever the peer team will come, they will meet only with the IPC coordinator and the principal uh, HOI, head of the institute. They will not meet with any other uh, body. They will meet with the uh, interact with different fraternity, but during the negotiation of the writing report, after writing report, whenever they negotiate with you, whether this is okay, this thing, doing this, opportunity is okay for your institute, at the time they will sit only the IPC coordinator and the uh, HOI, head of the institute. So my suggestion that IPC coordinator should take responsibility in uh, with consulting with the HOI to prepare on this committee. So if and each committee should active, actively work, otherwise NAC accreditation is not possible. Okay, but if all the members of the committee will work, uh, work nicely, I think uh, there is, you will be qualified in NAC very nicely. Then the data and document submission and HCI portal, as I already told you, all the data should be submitted through the HCI portal. Okay. So if you have time, then I can show you the NAC website if you permit, otherwise I can go on to the next slide. Or if you visit yourself. I'm asking Sir, Sir or Madam. So should I show you the NAC website a little bit? Any, any reply from you? Yes, Hello. Sir, please continue. Yes, sir. Please continue. Okay, okay. So I'm just sharing uh, an app website. It just wait. Please wait. Yes, sir.
Is it visible? Yes, sir, it's visible. Okay, okay. okay. So the website, I think everybody know, nag.gov.in. You see all these notifications are there. You should visit all these notif notification announcement, notification over here. And for each year registration, you click over here that apply online. Or here you can uh, go, you can log in here. So apply online, here you click on this apply online. Once you apply online, you see all these manuals are there. Uh, the manuals that I have shown downloaded and shown over here. All the manuals are there. Okay. University affiliated college, etc. It is there. Then if you click on this apply, if you click on this apply, then this HCI login, this portal will come. Otherwise, directly you can come uh, from here and then you need to register. Okay, if you are the new to this NACAC edition, then first you need to register and then you need to log in. And moving to the home. And one thing I may show you, you see, apply online, if you click here, apply online, some help, help desk number is there. And even once your ID will be created or HA portal will be created, there is some help desk. And with that help desk, you can place their query. Whatever you have query in your mind, you can place, they will give the answer very quickly. Even in a day, they can get their reply. Now I can show you, the I can click on this accreditation status. If you want to get some reference manual, uh, from here you can get the reference manual. So accreditation status for university college, you can click here. You can click here. You can, if you want to get some manual from university, from university college, according to you select, you can select over here. Say you can select say West Bengal, West Bengal is there, you can select whether cycle 1 or cycle 2 or all cycles and do that, the result declared, for example, you see, uh, this this is result declared, this is submitted or something like that, okay, now you can click here show details, once you click on show details, they will show you some listing of colleges. Here I have given only all cycles, so I think they are able to find out. It is submitted to show details. You see, college names are there. Okay. Is the palette is visible? Say Sonata Degree College, is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's visible. Okay. So from here you can get the status of the because it is transparent. NAC is transparent. It is transparent to all. So see, they have submitted on 2022. Their IIP status approved. They submitted the SSR on uh, 22nd January. Their final grade is declared, and you can click on there all these fields to get there, the gate seat is also there. It is transparent to all. So accordingly, you can check everything. If some other colleges are there, according to your level or your requirement, you can go through this visit, go through this website and you can get it. Okay. So these are about the, many things are there. These are about the NAC website. So I have almost completed the strategy for NAC acquisition in this presentation.
but still many skills are remaining if you want to go for nac acquisition then my suggestion you can go through uh, of this nac manual and the nac website so in this presentation i mainly discuss about the benefit of acquisition core values qia pis assessment acquisition process assessment output of outcome and grading system so for preparing this presentation i consulted the revised manual from the nac and access to the yesterday event okay thank you all for your patience i will be very still in minutes thank you so much sir participants are requested to pose their questions to the speaker if they have any queries Uh, uh, Shurujit sir, actually there is a question in the chat box. Yes. yes. Uh, Shurujit sir, am I audible? Yes, are you? You are audible. Ha, uh, yes sir. There is a question from the participant in the chat box. That is, uh, actually for the morning presentation, she is uh, please share the link of determining the co-attainment level for PO using formula in Excel. Link. Link. Link for attainment. Link for link of determining co-attainment level for PO using formula in Excel. Oh, actually there is no formula. It is not defined formula. I have not developed any formula uh, for mapping purpose. It is from intuition. Okay, no formula or no mathematical background is there. Some in, I have seen in some internet material, some institute, they are uh, doing some formula uh, for the attainment purpose and uh, and also for mapping. For attainment purpose, okay, some formula we have followed uh, that already I have discussed, uh, discussed to you. That is for CU attainment. Uh, it is sixty percent. Sixty percent. This is the level one. Then seventy percent, sixty percent is level two, eighty percent, and sixty percent. This is level three. So that formula can be embedded yourself. Okay, if I have that formula, actually we are doing this without Excel. It is not possible to do that. Okay, if if I have that sheet, then I can see. I can share you later on through your coordinate. No issue. Okay, anything else? Sir, I am audible. Uh, yes, audible. Sir, actually I have posted that question. Uh, in morning session, you have told that. Uh, For determining uh, the level uh, CO level for each PO, uh, like one, two, or three level, we can't uh, place arbitrarily. Uh, there, you have told that uh, there is uh, each PO have some uh, uh, specific uh, criteria. So upon uh, and put uh, that criteria, CO is uh, filling or satisfying those criteria, all criteria or not, and based on those. Uh, yes and no values. Uh, we can determine the level uh, because we uh, earlier we in our institute we have put that value based on our assumption, but there is no specific mm. rules. Uh, so you have told that there in EICT there is a uh, EICT website. There are some uh, Excel sheet may be available where we can uh, from where we can download and. Uh, we can check that if that uh, 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 criteria is matching with that particular CO or not, and based on that we can determine the level of CO that is level one, two, or three, which will be best fit. Uh, so uh, uh, I have put, put that question for that purpose. Uh, is there any available uh, fixed any rules or anything source? If available, then uh, in the sense. See, even uh, I, I have got your question. Even in the NBA and NAC, there is no defined rules. Uh -huh. So far, I have visited. There is no defined rule. In AICT, But, student performance related to student performance, something has been uploaded. Yeah, yeah. If I got, if I got that AICT rules, then you, it will be helpful. If there is reference, then it is okay. But you need you need justify you need justify your okay. That may be accepted. No, it is uploaded by AICT. You may follow. No issue. But in NBA. Uh, no defined rule so far mentioned. If the defined rule is mentioned, then it will be very much easier for us. But yet there is no such rule as it is the part of uh, 
uh, part of pedagogy and it is the part of education technology uh -huh. so there is so far there is no boundary okay okay sir fine then uh, okay uh -huh. whatever we will follow you with the due justification okay, okay. Uh -huh. thank you sir does anybody have uh, any question um Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes audible. Uh, sir, I have, I have one doubt uh, regarding the PO attainment. So, yes. in um, Anand University Regulation 2021, they may give the POs in the syllabus itself. Yes. Uh, can, can we modify that or we have to follow that same one? Your institute is affiliated institute or autonomous institute? Affiliated institute. Affiliated institute. It is engineering program or general degree program? Engineering program. Engineering program. So if they will place the POs, I think uh, it is better to consider that. Because as you are affiliating institute, so as they mention the POs over there and they have given some mapping. Uh, so um, uh, as per my suggestion, uh, it is better to follow them and whenever the NBA will come or NAC will come, you can place them as they have defined. So we are following them. If you want to change, if you want to change, then your BOS board of studies uh, should change there and the intuition should be communicated to but, uh, university. Uh, my uh, doubt is uh, they, they may provide uh, the PO, PO for five units. In the previous scheme, uh, we, we can follow CO6, that is content beyond syllabus also in the content. Here there is no opportunity, so only masking. Follow that is so no problem, but we cannot uh, include content on syllabus in that one. That's same asking. No, what I understood that uh, if it is not properly mapped, so you can uh, you can consult with the university, with their um, uh, council or anybody those who are looking after this syllabus. So, okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Will you be taking more questions, sir? Is there any question in chat box? Sir, can you repeat? Any question in chat window? No, not yet. Check the either. So if you have any question, then you can ask me. Otherwise, If there are no questions, then we can end the session. We can at, at least, uh, you know, start our ending uh, uh, comments. Is there anyone who wants to ask a question? I think we should pro uh, proceed with our uh, schedule. So thank you so much, sir, for such an enriching uh, lecture. It was on, wonderful to hear you your uh, and your present is, presentation was really valuable. Uh, now I request uh, Dr. Tanvir Islam, sir, assistant professor and head of the department of the mechanical uh, department of the mechanical engineering of GKCEM to present you with the uh, with a little uh, token of appreciation that we have prepared from our end. Um, Raju sir is presenting that certificate. Okay. Uh, I think it is not coming yet. Yes, sir. Uh, then we say GKCM host Raghuna sir. Screen ta load ho chai kono. The screen is still loading. Uh, Okay. Wait, sir. Yes, yes, it, it came, it came. Sir, please accept this. Uh, Utterly accepted. Thank you. Utterly accepted. 
thank you so much sir for giving uh, your valuable time to us in both the morning and afternoon session um thank you participants for joining thank you for being uh, patient uh we can we can wrap up the session here i guess and we will join tomorrow on time sir thank you very much sir sir your uh, both you. sessions we are really really enriched and uh, listen hope so it will uh, very much uh, useful for our next academic process sir sir if any doubt uh, in our institution definitely we communicate with you sir sure sure no issue i will be available for you okay yes sir thank you thank you very much thank you thank you all thank you so much everyone uh, so good afternoon to you all again and have a good day uh participants already yeah. uh, give the assignment link in uh, zoom chat box and uh, as well and the as feedback YouTube. link is given as well yes yes all the links are provided already yes okay so available in the both of the youtube and also in the zoom so please uh, complete the assignment and the feedback link from your end participant thank you all Thank you all.